Before we get started, I would like to give a special thanks to each staff member that made this podcast possible. Nova, our outreach manager. Hydra, our writer. Frostbro, our editor and administrator. Curve, our standby editor. Cody Cat, our voiceover specialist. Arare, our audio engineer. Albatross, our graphic designer. Vex, our guest relationship manager. And last but not least, our project manager and show host, Top Bug. Welcome to the first episode of the Wings of Fire podcast, Tower of the Outclaws. It's a series where we invite a couple of guests to appear on the show to talk about a different book in the Wings of Fire series, created by 2ET Sutherland and published by Scholastic. I'm your show host, The Top Bug, and here are the guests we have for today. Hi, uh, I'm B. Uh, I, I also go by A. I do some art and stuff, and I've been reading Wings of Fire for a few years now. Uh, hi, my name is Bomb here, but you can also call me Bomb, and I also do art and a little bit of writing when I need, when I want to. All right, hello, I'm Khan, and I'm an artist, <laughs> and uh, I've been reading Wings of Fire since 2014. Uh, hey, I'm V. I use they/them pronouns. I'm fairly recent to the Wings of Fire community, only like a year or so, and I art sometimes. Yeah. I'm glad we all got that cleared up. And before we get started, I would like to begin the discussion about Wings of Fire as a whole. And what does it mean to like each of you guys? Like, how did you guys like get into the series personally? Um. Yeah, you can go first, P. All right. Thank you. I was I think I was in primary school, and I had, like just been reading Warriors for like a long time. And my friend was like, "Oh, um, you should read this book." Like, I met her that year, and I was like, "Oh, okay." I don't really think I'm gonna enjoy it. Um, and then I read it and I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. And like instantly just got like <laughs> completely absorbed into it. And then I immediately dropped all other series for this book. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Nice. Um, so how I got into it, uh, a friend showed me the comic book in uh, grade four. And then I immediately fell in love and I only started to actually read the chapter books, uh, I think a few months later. And then I just uh, read all of them in like a month span. <laughs> All right. Um, so funny thing, I was reading this series called like Dragon Keepers or something, and I was really into this book called like Dragon in the Sock Drawer. And my grandma, she found like a dragon book, which was apparently book one of Wings of Fire, and I just fell in love th- from there. I mean, I was in fourth grade, and then <laughs> here I am, you know. <laughs> yeah, it seems like everyone here like got into like around grade school and something like that me i was a little bit tardy to the party <laughs> i first came into contact with the wings of fire when i volunteered at a local library a couple of years ago i was putting books back into the shelves when one of the covers caught my eye and that one was the legends dark stalker book which ended up becoming my favorite book oh. funny enough and i also saw a promo for darkness of dragons outside earlier in the hallway as well All and right. i decided to pick it up and the, the rest was history from that wow point. that's recent <laughs> yeah it was like five years ago i think all right so but i'm still just as enthusiastic i like for me it was like just like a random thing at night like i was like i got bored because i can't sleep well and i just saw the book in the corner i was like hey it was book six and i was just like huh maybe i should actually read this for once and i loved it yeah it's pretty it's pretty interesting how we got like different people from different histories with the series <laughs> Like it's a it's a book series I like, and the reason why I created this podcast in the first place is because I wanted to give other people a chance to talk about the series more, along with myself, and bring up any other news that may come along, just to keep it up and running mm-hmm. for the foreseeable future. So I think that part's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. I will say right now, for quick warning, like this episode will contain spoilers for Wings of Fire, but it's only for the first book. So we're not going to be talking about anything that comes after the Dragon and Prophecy. So we're just going to keep the discussion to book one only. All right. Does that sound good to everyone else? Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Mm-hmm. Yep. With that being said, we can probably dive in right now to the first book, the Dragon and Prophecy, which released July 1st, 2012, which is 
at the time of this publishing, it'll be 10 years ago from today, which is pretty impressive. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Anniversary. Yep. Yep. Woo! That's crazy. Yep. Now we, it's it's pretty crazy how we got nearly 30 books in the span of like 10 years. Like I'm thinking, man, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. Wow. So that's what including with like all this, mm-hmm. all the spinoffs and the graphic novels. Oh my gosh. I, I think it's pretty crazy like how... Uh, how this is able to get so many people here to just come together for one series. I find that pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I got my book here and I guess I'll, I could start by g- giving a quick summary by reading the back cover. <laughs> uh, back cover time. Cause I'm cool. All right. The dragonets are coming to save the day. Clay has lived his whole life under the mountain. The budwing dragonet knows that the war is raging between the dragon tribes and the world outside. A war that he and his four other dragonets have are destined to end. According to the mysterious prophecy they have been taught, the five chosen dragonets were stolen from their homes while they were still in their eggs and hidden away for years, all to fulfill the prophecy. But not every dragonet wants a destiny, and when danger threatens one of their own, Clay and his friends may choose freedom over fate, leave the mountain, and set the dragon world on a course that no one could have predicted. So, what do you guys think of like your, your general thoughts of reading this book? Uh, who should go first? <laughs> I mean, I, I can start. So it's yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, re- yeah. I, the, I first read this book about, I'd say, five years ago. And, I like, it took me a while to, like, get into it because I was busy with other things. And when I come back to reread this book, and I'm just, I'm just thinking, man, there was a lot more graphic detail than I remembered. Because, like, I there was, like, a couple scenes later where it's just, like, where Tui goes into vivid detail and, like, some violence and i'm just thinking man this is crazy but overall i thought this was a very good introduction to like the world of like what kind of story we're being set up for mm-hmm. oh, uh, i guess i'll i guess i'll just go next. yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, don't worry um, yeah. so the, my general idea of the book it's it's a it's, i think it's a good starter to start off uh how wings of fire um i think i think it was a good starting book for it it explains um explains the five dragonets uh not super in depth but it does explain clay in depth and i think clay was the uh, a good character to start with it uh the storyline is pretty good and the villain is great that's in my opinion though yeah b do you want to go next yeah um so i think the entire like starting bit you, yeah kind of what bomb said it's you get the characters described to you really well. Like you get to see kind of their values at like the very start, and you get to see the type of characters they are. And Clay was like a very good like perspective to begin with. Yeah, yeah, I could say the same. I really enjoyed that they just Tui just jumped right in. I mean, there was not too much of an introduction. It was just right there. It just starts with all this sort of drama and violence and it, it really catches <laughs> you, you know <laughs> yeah yeah well, they, they really get into it like going all in and like the first few chapters yeah <laughs> yeah i think it's like it's a really good introdu- introduction to the series like it like helps like build onto the world and like starts off with like clay like he's a sweetheart i think it's good to start i think he was a good starting character mm-hmm and like Khan said, yeah, just like jump straight into the ab- action. Yeah, <laughs> it just it just jumps straight yeah, to kinda... like immediate violence. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. quite. Yeah, that's it quite. It jumps the... into prison to violence. Yeah, I say that the beginning of a story is like one of the most important. Yeah, so. yeah, I read this. I was like, oh my goodness. No, 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 no. it goes from goes from prison to violence to prison to more violence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. The thing is pretty much every book. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're right, you're right. The, the summary of it, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Here we go. I got, like, let's start with, like, the, the dragon and prophecy itself, right? All right. Should, All right. We, do, uh, should All right. we do, like, the hey, prologue hey. first? Uh, yeah, I was going to read, like, the, the actual prophecy. To oh, start yeah, yeah, go, ahead. Oh, go for it. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, here's the, here's the dragon and prophecy. When the war has lasted 20 years... The dragonets will come. When the land is soaked in blood and tears, the dragonets will come. Find the sea wing egg of deepest blue. Wings of night shall come to you. The largest egg in mountain high will give to you the wings of sky. For wings of earth, search through the mud for an egg the color of dragon blood. And hidden alone from the rival queens, the sand wing egg awaits unseen. Of three queens who blister and blaze and burn, two shall die and one shall learn. 
If she bows to a fate that is stronger and higher, she'll have the power of wings of fire. Five eggs to hatch on the brightest night. Five dragons to born to end the fight. Darkness will rise to bring the light. The dragon nets are coming. Yeah. Oh, that's that's the OG prophecy. <laughs> yes. Anyone else have that like memorized, or is that just me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I've memorized literally every single I was single about prophecy. to ask. <laughs> no, was... I was about to ask. <laughs> Like, not even right. looking at the book, I could probably recite it word for word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah That's mean, when the, you know you're the, probably too deep center. into a fandom. Well, it's the one that <laughs> sticks with you. It's what yeah, you're it, introduced it, it's, to. It's the OG, you know? Yeah, I mean, I can hardly remember these new prophecies, but, like, this this right here, this is where it all started, and I'll never forget it, you know? It just nailed to your brain. <laughs> yeah, I always gotta remember the, the roots. Yeah. <laughs> Can't remember like algebra formulas, but you remember the prophecies. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me memorizing. Two plus two. No, no, no. That's memorize a prophecy. fictional prophecies mm. over. Yeah, math. But... All right. So, are we gonna right. talk about the uh, prologue? Yeah, we'll probably just dive into the prologue. Yeah, I got like a little summary. Right, go, go, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. All right. All right. Here we go. Six years ago, an Icewing inhibitor was caught trying to take an egg from the Sky Kingdom by Burn of the Sandwings, and two of her soldiers who were informed of Hibitur's infiltration by Queen Scarlet of the Skywings. Burn basically captures the both of them, and she throws the Skywing egg off the cliff they're on, and then proceeds to rip Hibitur's wing and use her tail barb against his skull. Oh so Again, we're already having yes. quite the tone. <laughs> we're immediate <laughs> violence. Immediate violence in like no care in the world that someone just t- no two someone just, just died. <laughs> yeah. Destroy an egg and then rip the wings off a dragon yep. and then stab them in the skull. That's, that's how you know the good that's book series. Like, this is be my that's oh how you know the good book series. That's yeah. That's that's Enjoy how you saw it. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's ages nine to twelve. Yeah, they could probably they could probably handle this, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure. That, that, All right. Is fine. Uh, Just a can bit I of go violence. first, like some observations and like, yeah. analysis? Okay. So, uh, y- yeah, sure. So go ahead. you know how when Hibichir, I can't say his name. I'm so sorry. If I'm saying it wrong. I just don't know how. So, um, <laughs> I probably messed it up too. I'll probably put like a just yeah, public the same right. I do not know so. how to say any names correctly. I'm just gonna say that right now. <laughs> so like, don't quote me on it. Don't quote me on it. Okay. All right. All um, right. <laughs> so you know how like a Skywing Skywing guard like shoves a um like a flaming hot. Um, muzzle thing on yeah. um, Fajord, so he can't. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh my God, I'm just saying Fajord. Uh, <laughs> on Hibichir, so he like. He doesn't come till later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> no. So, um, at for, like, where do those rocks come from? Cause like, I wouldn't say yeah. like, they'd always rocks. be there. Like, why? Why is there like a bunch of flaming rocks on like a random cliff? I don't know. And I'm, I'm wondering like, like a fire. Cause he just like grabbed the fire muzzle there, like, just in the middle guard. of the mountains. Like, this time when you're just, like, Were grabbed it from there. Yeah, it was, like, a fiery, like, embers or something like that. Yeah, I imagine it, it, it just like, grabbed it, and I was like, where over. did it come from? Yeah, maybe they sold oh, it. Oh, yeah, it's it, it just a portable right fire in the middle of the mountains. Yeah, just portable. It's, it's portable, right? What's it say? I found the paragraph. One of the soldiers grabbed a chain from a pile of smoldering coals. He threw it around the ice dragon's snout, clamping his jaws together with a sizzling smell of burning Yeah, scales. didn't they yeah. just find him, So, too? yeah, portable and fire. Yeah, like, how did you just bring it? I, 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 um, Maybe they have like a little. They have visions. They have like a little set, like a little pouch of like burning you know, rocks. I guess. Yeah, sure, that works, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Unless yeah. they pinpointed the exact mountain, they would find or, him on. Then I would like to think that they brought or a like, pouch okay, of like uh, burning rocks. I would understand if it's like it was like a skywing outpost because I'd say like there would be fire oh. like rocks there, you know. Oh, but I don't think yeah. it ever said that, did yeah. it? Uh, no. Yeah. And they yeah. mentioned like the the burning rocks later. And then in the story. Um, like, I'm I'll looking at event discussion right now. Lucy Lemon says uh, just grab some rocks and the guards set them on fire. Um, but there was like no indication of that. Like uh, it never said guards set them on fire. It was just a bol- burning, <laughs> smoldering rocks like sitting there. It's like how did you know yeah. they were gonna be there? I think yeah. maybe they like somehow mm-hmm. saw him flying. They're like, "Oh, better be prepared!" And then they just like, gotta be prepared, guys. Just really smoldering yeah. rocks in like a sack or something. Like, how do you hold that? Yeah, how does that? <laughs> oh, ah, hot, hot, hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like flying there. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe they're they're just too cool and they have oh. to kill him. Right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, think for, I think the ice. You know, too cool. No, so I always interpreted mm-hmm. it as like 
iron will burn the scales of a dragon, right? That's what I interpreted oh. it, it as. Like, that's what yeah. I thought at first. But now that you mentioned that, yeah, they did have coals. And I never I never caught that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Connie. Uh, well, I just called you Connie. I'm so sorry. You can yeah. call me Connie. <laughs> I didn't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Anyway. It's all right. We're, we're all good. <laughs> we're all chill, guys. We're all chill. <laughs> so, um, so that th- you're... you're um, your theory is kind of debunked because didn't like they have iron and like uh, unflammable uh, yeah. wing clampers and like things like they hold yeah, on. Yeah, they did. Like, yeah, yeah. I can't. I don't. I forgot the word for. But like on the Skyway prison. <laughs> the bindings. Yeah, I don't yeah, know where I there. got that from, but I always thought of it like that in that scene, and then never thought about it again. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. Anyway, <laughs> it was pretty wild. <laughs> But yeah, so basically after that's done, like now we're introduced like to the remaining three guardians, um, a sea wing named Webbs, a sky wing Kestrel, and then the sand wing Dune. And then yeah, cause... we also learned that uh, the mud wing Asha died from trying to carry the, the blood wing egg to the, the yeah. Mountain. And the basically Kestrel was ready to yeah. give up on the, the prophecy Rest in until Webbs decided. <laughs> and, and, then just, yeah. and then we just forget about Hivichu that yes. just got thrown off a cliff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we just immediately forget yeah. about that. Oh, oh so, uh, sorry. Honestly, I probably shouldn't like yeah. cut in right here about uh, still about the prologue, but um, I was confused because you know how it's in the book like you could hear like Fajor like his um body like like um hit the bottom of the cliff thing. Oh, you mean like, uh, the echo of it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. how did you not hear the egg shatter? <laughs> what? Like you know how the egg what? was thrown off the cliff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how did you not yeah. hear that, but you heard Fajord's body? Oh my god, I keep saying Yeah, wouldn't it be like ah, glass? Ah, body just being yeeted it's off a cliff. Yeah, maybe it would be like... Hmm. Maybe it, it might it, have it been due... It shattered, right? Yeah, yeah. It might have been due to repetition, maybe. But it just depends. I, I, they might have I just really don't know. know. Yeah. Mm. That's probably what happened. Right, yeah. yeah. All right, on to the actual book. I'm just sticking to that part because I had so many notes from that part. <laughs> no, it's perfect. Right. Yeah. We got to make sure we got all the details. Mm-hmm. Uh, are we going to do, like, a uh, character analysis at the end, like, seeing, like, every character? We'll probably mm-hmm. we'll probably do those, of, like, once I'm done giving, like, the summaries for each of the uh, parts okay. just to make our jobs yeah, easier. Sorry, because, like, right. I had, like, uh, notes written for, like, every single chapter along with, like, the <laughs> points, but if we were to read through all of those, then we'd probably be here all day. Yeah. Like, everyone else. Yeah, it'll be book. fine. Yeah. It's, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anyway, let's, let me finish reading the yeah, my prologue. So, yeah. Yeah, Webb's, like, doesn't want to give up on the process, prophecy, even though the Skywing Egg is dead, so he decides oh. to go to the Rainforest Kingdom to bring in... Glory's egg to help make the prophecy come true, no matter the cost. Yeah. All right. Okay. And that basically concludes the prologue. So yeah, this is literally like the only time we learn so, the character. Because yeah, with uh, the, so are we like, gonna do character analysis it's... now, like of the prologue of what we've seen? Of the prologue, yeah, we could. Yeah, I, I just have like, a bunch of notes on it. I just didn't want them to go to waste. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, should I just go first since I kind of brought it up? Sure, okay. go ahead. So, uh, Fajor- oh my gosh! <laughs> Hivichir, I, I can't say the name. Hivichir, he, he, uh, the way he talks, he just seems like he, like, legitimately like, cares and believes in the prophecy, unlike all the other guardians, which kind of, like, we just gotta raise the children and, like, get them out of the house when we're done. Uh, but the way he talks, he just legitimately seems like he doesn't believe in it and he wants the best for the, yeah. for the, for the, the war. And then, um, yeah, I agree with that. And then to burn. So, uh, immediate right off the bat, so merciless and just does not care. Like, uh, she does not care about the prophecy, nothing, like, at all. It's Literally, all, like, no care. Not even for, like, a baby dragon egg. Yeah, um, and then, so, after that, she kind of just, like, ye- like kills Fajord. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> If it's her, can I, Karen, let me give you, like, a little stick. Yeah, I need to, you know, guys, I swear. I'm, like, to get on, like, my webcam, like, I need to look at that, okay? Yeah. So, if it's her, he, she just kills, like, immediate, like, no mercy. She wants it to go her way. And she, yeah. she'll do anything to make it that way. You can kill, like, a dragon ass. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's probably sensible, since usually the queens are probably paranoid, because I literally said that, like, Two of them would yeah, die. I swear. Like <laughs> when we get to Fajor, I'm just gonna like to only saying Hivichir at that point. I swear, I'm calling. <laughs> no, we'll probably give you like a little reminder to to make sure not to do <laughs> that. Don't, don't talk about the other but, one. 
I do agree that Hevinter was probably, from what we've seen, like he was probably one of the more idealistic when it comes to <laughs> believing in the prophecy. Yeah. Mm. And trying to make sure that it would come true. But he was unfortunate. And, and, and uh, Kestrel and Webbs, you guys can help me on this, but Kestrel, like, immediately off the bat, um, does not care. She just kind of wants it. She's just trying to following what someone said. And then Webbs, he seems like he cares a little bit more. Like, not I don't think as much as Fitcher he cared, but he still wanted to, like, not kill, like, just not give up on everything. Yeah. yeah. I feel like with Kestrel, yeah, like though... Webbs... Oh, sorry. No, it's fine. Okay, okay. Uh, like, Webbs... He, like, he, like, obviously, like, more than Kestrel, but, like, a little, like, a little less than, I can't say his name, Hivitor. Hivitor? Um, yeah, I don't think anyone could say his yeah. name. That's, like, the Hivitur, biggest mystery Hivitur, of the Hivitur, series. Hivitur. That's probably Hivitur? why the name was chosen. Yeah. Just so like, he yeah. dies like, first. No one has to remember him for the rest of the Just make the audience series. forget about the characters so we couldn't see epic character growth, okay? <laughs> just make, just, just, like, throw him off yeah. the he's gonna, he's gonna stay there for a while, you know? Save the better names for later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think too. He confirmed that in an interview once. Like she like she prefers to save like the best names for later. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Sorry, I'm like try. looking at. Uh, this is totally random. I'm looking at event discussion, and then bucket of grain just said Fedora's cool, too cool to live. I'm like, oh, you made the ice wing joke. I get it. It's it made me laugh. I right did a little now. giggle at it. <laughs> Fedora's too cool to live. Yeah, you're right. Uh. <laughs> I like, made a joke oh, about man, that too. Here we are, anyway, but... sorry. Back to the actual We're thing. Like... Um, we're still in the prologue and we are already messing up games. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> my bad, guys. It's all on me to be honest. <laughs> I'm gonna try to use it's Google fine. to see how to like, say his name. Hvitcher, please give me an answer. <laughs> I mean, the series does have plenty of characters to keep track of, Quibbly. so I understand like the mix up. Keebly, it, it's Keebly. <laughs> we'll go into that for another episode. Yes. Let's let's move on. <laughs> Now, now I have to pull up my notes again. Okay. All right. Here we go. Act one. Well, what was the title? I gotta look at my. Uh, under the mountain. I probably should have been more. Under, under the mountain. mountain. Yes, yeah. thank you. I probably should have been more. Prepared. <laughs> I, I, I You're good. Prepared, You're more prepared than I am. No. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the plot. All right. Under the mountain. We see like six years after the prologue. Basically, the five dragons of destiny have grown up together. We got. Uh, Clay the Mudwing, Tsunami the Seawing, Glory the Rainwing, Starflight the Nightwing, and Sunny the Sandwing. And they've basically been raised by each of the Guardians, Castro, Webbs, and Dune, for six years. And they were told not to let them leave under any circumstances until they turn eight years old. And then we learn about the how the war started, which is basically Queen Oasis of the Sandwings was killed by a scavenger a long time ago. And then... It's like tradition in this universe. Like if you are like a descendant of like the queen, and you challenge her and kill her and defeat her, then you're basically uh, well, the queen it's now. Only but daughters she was, yeah, that can challenge. Older oh, sisters, yes. first or yeah. cousins, yeah, yeah like, hmm? yeah. Hmm? Did you say anything, B? Um. Oh no no no. Uh, so I think I'm not really sure what notes to have. Can we circle it back around to me at the end? Uh, hmm? Oh, yeah, sure, I guess. Is that, is that fine with you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and so I was going to make a joke. It's like you said they were raised or by the uh, by the Guardians. I was going to say, like, oh, yeah, what's left of them? I was going to make a joke <laughs> there. Um, but I didn't think it was a good time to make that joke, so I didn't. <laughs> hmm. And we should probably, like, take turns of, like, describing a character at a yeah, time. Yeah, definitely. So. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why this is a learning process. Yes. So. I mean, it's the first one. Here. It'll only get better from here. Hopefully. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, hopefully it will. I don't know. Hey, hey. Positivity. <laughs> we'll, we'll <find> <laughs> We're going to do this, guys. We're going to do great. Yes, positivity. <laughs> that what you want? <laughs> Yelling in the microphone like some Minecraft YouTuber? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you want that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. Rest of the Rest of the part one. <laughs> right. What was I talking? Oh yeah, how the the Sandwich succession war started. So after Oasis was killed, her surviving daughters, Burn, Blister, and Blaze, like have been in a war for the past eighteen years to decide who's gonna uh, take the throne. And uh, I guess like the three of you can like take a turn to like deciding like how to describe like each sister in like a few sentences. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I've already gone first a lot, so I'm gonna just give that opportunity to someone else. Oh. Well, uh, uh, I can go. Alright, go ahead. Uh, so first of I... all, like, I like, like, the way... Oh, if you wanna go, you could. No, 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 you can go. Okay, I, first of all, I, um, I just, like, like, um, how Tui, instead of, like, making, like, a separate part for, like, introducing how the war started, she just, like, made, like, the dragonettes, like, the main characters in, like, this book, mm -hmm. just explain it themselves. I just like how it was like separated instead of like it wasn't separated, it was like part of the actual storyline. Yeah. And not just like some random block of text just <laughs> explaining what happened. Yeah, I, I, Yeah, because like each of them acted and out. It I thought it was adorable. Content. It was yeah. adorable it was so how they acted it was. It out. <laughs> yeah, it was really cute. Yeah, and it gives you more of their personality. We yeah, have... it definitely does that. Yeah. Mm. And we have our Little Queen Starflight. <laughs> or... You mean, you mean yeah. Princess, princess Starflight? Princess Starflight. That makes princess it even Star better, oh. to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Starflight, my favorite Wings of Fire princess. Yeah, and then we have, like, Clay, <laughs> but he has a... He, but Clay, but on two legs. Yeah, yeah a little gremlin. A little gremlin, gremlin guy. A yeah. little, little man. Little man. <laughs> I love that scene so much. I forgot I know, about it. I know, it's just so, it's so cute. It. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It shows their personality too. Like, Starflight's like, oh, one of them was like, oh, I don't want to be a princess again. And the other was like, do it. And then. I yeah, so not be like, you better be the princess. <laughs> and then. <laughs> yeah, so like, typical siblings. Yeah. Yeah, sibling rivalries. Yeah. Because <laughs> it, it, it shows her, like, like yeah. their relationship isn't exactly, like, like incredibly great. It has, it has some flaws in it, but it's still a good relationship, nonetheless. Well, yeah, it's like. Siblings like tend to like bicker and argue, so it's yeah, like, it's yeah. Really natural for them to do that because they were like like uh, stay like that for like what seven years, six years. Yeah, six years. It was six. It was six right, years. Okay, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh god. Um. Well, what care? Uh, are we just gonna like go into the next? Part, now or? I got. I gotta find where I left off. <laughs> we were. Uh, no, I don't remember. Yeah. Either, to be honest. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, basically, like, after they reenact the entire War of Stanimic Succession, there's this big Nightwing named Morosir, who basically gave the Dragonite prophecy all those years ago to, like, check up on the Dragonets to see how they're doing. And then he notices that Glory is not the, the Skywing in the prophecy, and he was pretty agitated about that. Mm. And, um, he told each of the Guardians, Webb's Kestrel and Dune, to basically kill Glory by the time he returns. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, immediate and, uh, violence. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. I don't know if you have that next, but it's it's very interesting how Kestrel thinks that Tsunami is the only one that'll actually, like, try to stop them, you know? Yeah, because, like, she, they yeah. ended up chaining up Tsunami. Yeah, this to, is like, the part where that, I started to, uh, like, really heavy Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah. great. Uh, yeah. Didn't she start yeah. singing at that point as well? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, oh, yeah, like the, the, the dragonists are coming! Are coming. <laughs> It's on two times speed. I heard... oh, yeah. Especially on two times I speed. Some... <laughs> yeah, I heard somewhere that basically the Dragonets are coming. Our song is like supposed to be sung in the same tune as like 99 yeah, yeah, Balls on the Wall. So it'll be something like, the Dragonets are coming. They're coming to save the day. They're coming to fight for the Noah's right. The Dragonets are right. Oh! Wow! Okay, okay. So what I first... Uh, so what I first saw when um, uh, the door opened, Glory like, immediately tried to hide herself by camouflaging. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, like and then like, yeah. stout 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 lag stout stout I know the word. To lag my <laughs> You got it. Yeah. And then when Mars hears like what's happening, why didn't the prophecy fall anything? Kestrel was just immediately to blame Webs and Dune for everything. And she didn't <gasps> even take anything into um, uh, her mind, you know. Mm. Yeah, that was she yeah. was quick she was to, really like, to accuse. Blame them for everything. And um, yeah. and then fingers. tsunami is kind of like alert, like when the rock, uh, when the rock goes open, like her frills go up, her ears like start to twitch, and she kind of wants everyone to go her way. And Clay's sort of a pushover at the start. I'm just gonna say that, like sort <laughs> of. Yeah. And then um, and then yeah. I think they were talking about like they wanted to escape right before that, right? Mm-hmm. I think it was it wasn't until they figured out that Glory was going to be. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Then I had like a thing on that. Oh, too. Right. And then um, 
and then this is the funny part. I have this note, and it says, only thing Clay can remember of the Nightwings is that they're super powered, super mysterious, and full of themselves. I think that sums it up pretty well, right? Well, yeah, because, like, yeah. in the yeah, yeah. universe, I think Nightwings are probably, like, the least documented about, of all the dragons. Definitely. Or, or of all the tribes. No, it would be Mudwings. No, I think it would be Rainwings. Well, because... They yeah, but oh, documented. They're, they're, they're like yeah, yeah, yeah. Too, sorry, so. my, bad, my bad. I'm saying they're one of the most. They're one of the oh, least documented yes. tribes in Pyria. Oh uh, yeah, and then like they're super mysterious. <laughs> they, they they are very secretive. Uh, I yeah. mean, uh, the only the only scroll that really contains any like somewhat decent information is uh, Tales of the Nightwings, which Starflight reads. And what he said, yeah, choose him up. And then, are yeah. we on the battle scene yet? I think I think I was talking okay, about. Okay, yes, go ahead. Uh, Sorry, my bad. I cut you off. That's all right. Yeah, basically, after figuring out that uh, they're coming to kill Glory, they have to make an escape plan now. So, Mudwings are able to hold their breath for up to an hour. So that is because Tsunami is chained up, and none of the others can hold their breath them for that long. They decide to send in a uh, clay through the underground ground river in hopes to like find a way out. Yes. And uh, I remember reading somewhere in like a. Like, Tui actually confirmed that, like, that was, like, one of her deepest fears is, like, swimming, like, underwater. Oh, my with, God, like, I can do that. No Ooh, that must have been direction. horrible to write for her then. Oh, my God, no, <laughs> no. Yeah. Like, drowning. Oh, oh dude. Oh, I was yeah. holding my be- breath while reading that. You were? It was like, like, actually? Yeah. Oh, my gosh, I did not do Me that. Too. Dang, I'm missing out on some real, real cool acting right there. <laughs> <laughs> but you lose breath in mid book. You, like, I like that and you come back. Too. Oh, where are we? <laughs> No, it's method acting. Method acting. <laughs> yeah. Like, like you pass out and you come back like, oh, where are we? <gasps> <laughs> you yeah. like breathe in, like, okay, Wait, hopefully I don't faint this time. <laughs> yeah. Does that yeah, mean when like in the, like the fighting scenes that you like act out? <laughs> no, I would just oh, imagine that. Like, act out the fight. <laughs> no, I would try my hardest yeah. to imagine them in my head, and I would be so invested in it. But oh I bet God, your parents thought you were really weird. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Expressions. Like, oh, dude, that's facial like expressions. Yep, like my Spa- friends facial just expressions. See me just frowning so aggressively. It's like, it's like what, yep. what, what, what book are you reading? What's the scene going on? What's going on here? <laughs> like just yelling at my book. Like, what? Like, yeah. what are you doing? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa you good there? <laughs> I actually took some notes about like yeah, different tribe style of combat that I found really interesting, and I think I'll mention it later once we get yeah. to. Yeah, uh, uh, I have, so, uh, I have, a, I have like I think mm-hmm. one combat note uh, for how Marcia attacked uh, Tsunami. He immediately like bared his teeth and went for her neck. Oh, that's, that's mm-hmm. what I. Uh, uh, that? so it reels when so. A clay like starts to go to, uh, towards Marcia without like a beat because he saw like Tsunami getting attacked, and then night- apparently Nightwing's kills have small parts that you can like like sink their cl- sink their um teeth into. Uh, that's what the book said, dude. And um. So what Marcia oh, wow. said, Marcia approved of Clay and Tsunami. We'll have to see for Sunny, and then Marcia <laughs> expects much more of Starflight. Th- uh, then he reveals that he wasn't actually gonna hurt Tsunami. And uh, did, did you say Mars Marcia? Marosir. 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 I was like, who's Marcia? Marosir. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, like when oh, I talk super goes. fast, I need to like like don't talk that fast because I just like kind of like pull on all my words in like one. But okay. but Marcia yeah, does I, like right. tell Starflight it's like oh yeah I assumed you didn't you thought uh, I wasn't gonna stack the ceiling obviously and you're gonna go like go to the cave next to me. Um, mm, I think Marcia expects much more of uh, mm-hmm. Starflight than uh, Starflight can actually give to him. Yeah, because he hasn't can developed. I, can I jump real quick? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Sorry. 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 Uh, during like the fight scene, we actually learned that like the most vulnerable part mm-hmm. about Pyrian dragons is that that spot on the end of their tail. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah was I was like, that that too. Tsunami, like, when, um, Kestrel was quote-unquote picking on Clay and then Tsunami, like, like, bites her yeah. the tail. Yeah, was chomp. He, he was just chomp. Hey, wait. Did, did yeah. Sunny bite, like, Marosir's yes, tail yes, at some point? Yeah, she did. Point? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, she did. She did. Uh, yeah. And then, and then it's revealed that Sunny has a favorite stalactite. I thought it was just the cutest thing. I wrote it in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> she's, wait, which one? She's a favorite stalactite. Yeah, and oh, she like 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 climbs on her face and lock tight, and she has to like, and then like she can't reach some of them because she's so small. Like, oh my god, it's the cutest thing I've ever read. <laughs> yeah, she's like she's, yeah. she's she's pretty smaller than like the average. Also, yeah. I just want to say now that we're on the topic of Sunny, I love how it was like 
we had to like imagine her you know i love how we had to imagine every single character in a way like you didn't yeah. know what they exactly looked like definitely <laughs> right yeah until you got the graphic them. novel yeah definitely. i think i imagined them all exactly like the references on the uh the i don't remember how, how i imagined them to be honest sunny was a lot different than i <laughs> <Me> thought either <laughs> sunny i think sunny was just like less golden i thought Anyway, back yeah. to like the I actual book. I, so. I thought she was more golden because, like, isn't it said like that same kind of like scales. a pale sand color? Yeah. Yes. And then like Sunday, like she has like she was more golden than the average sunwing, and instead of like black eyes, she had green, like gray. moss green. green. It said moss green. Gray green. Page. Yeah, moss green. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of interesting mm-hmm. how like once you give like an official like design and like it's completely different from the one in your mind. Yeah. I feel like. But it kind of amazes me like how how yeah. like well we got it or how uh, bad we got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Tui's yeah, powers of describing. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty nutty when it all comes together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, back to me reading it up. Um. So yeah, after like Clay gets to like the middle of the cave, like Tsunami was able to catch up to him thanks to Starflight and Sunny's fire that burned down the the rest of the chain. And they finally escaped the mountain together and I think uh, I think Tsunami like dislocated her wing yeah, from like she was trying like, to escape falling. the chain. So Oh yes. yeah, it yeah, has Clay... a note on that saying like I dislocated my um thing so yeah. just free. And, and then Clay just like pushes it back. It's like oh okay. Ew. Yeah. That works, I guess. Yeah, it's so land. graphic. Everything's so graphic. I in could the just first imagine book. that so ungodly well, and it was just like, oh, like, uh, yeah, okay, early wigs okay. of fire. Early wigs of fire the was aim- something else. Yeah, I think I think like, I just imagine something else. Like, I just imagined the crunch when it just got shoved back into place. Mm. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. And... <laughs> Alright, after they managed to escape, they finally encounter the the queen of the skywings, um, Scarlet. And, like, I think she was trying to, like, convince them to, like, follow her <laughs> until, like, she, like, Scarlet ate, like, a, a scavenger and just, like, the, bit his head off. And it said, ew, it just like, like, ew, but I'm like, what? She was <laughs> so calm. It was, and like, it was I so really graphic. It was, like, it was, like, like, it was super graphic. It tastes, like, all stringy and tastes like fish. No, and, 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 and then, like, one, it was, like, blood spraying out of the neck. I was like, oh, my God, that's so graphic. Like, oh, my God. Like, the 90s. Yeah. Definitely a kid's book. You're not 12-year-olds, guys. <laughs> Enjoy yeah. this, children. <laughs> Guys, I was a nine when I read that. I was a nine when I read that. I was completely fine with that. Yeah, yeah, I was completely fine with that. Yeah, it's just, just dragon book. Just dragon book, you know? <laughs> it was pretty nutty. And, yeah. um, this is... <laughs> This is for children. And then, mm-hmm. um, I got this observation. Yeah. Even though Clay's only seventy years old, and like Scarlet's like over thirty, Scarlet's only slightly bigger than Clay. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, they're they're all six in the in the. Oh first yeah, book. my bad, my bad. Yeah. Uh, like and then we have... and basically after that, uh, tsunami G- tsunami manages to grab the scavenger sword and basically stab her in the tail. Yeah, so I took a note on that. Tsunami literally put the yeah. sword through Scarlet's tail into the ground. Oh. Like yeah, through and, like, it, penetrated right through. Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> One thing I Scarlet um... is pretty. Oh, you go, you go. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say Scarlet is like one of the deadlier queens because, like, I in chapter eleven it says that she reigned for thirty years and had yeah. fourteen yeah, yeah. challengers at their time, and all of them failed. Yeah. Fourteen. F- fourteen mm-hmm. daughters. Yeah, fourteen. And like, yeah, they, she had a fourteen girl. challenged her, and they all died. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is a them problem. Not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the 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 per- skywings are pretty ruthless. It's yeah, they really are. I yeah. think um one thing I want to note is that she was actually really like calm. Like when they were um when yeah, they, she, she found so the calm. Song, she was just like yeah. oh damn yeah that's my treasure unless you want to fight me for it oh yeah by the way I'm gonna eat this scavenger oh it tastes a little funky I'm gonna spit him out <laughs> and then it's like funky. um yeah and then the moment like, anyway, like, oh we don't want to trouble she's like, <laughs> And then it's just like, anyway, guys, and it just like screams yeah. in pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's crazy how she can go from like calm and cunning to like flat out violent yeah. in like a matter of seconds. It reminds me of Bill Cipher, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it, it's pretty wild, honestly. Oh, and it's whack. We kind of need to hear this up, I just realized it. <laughs> yeah. It's still on part yeah. one. Right, let's finish. Let's still fin- let's finish it up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just talking way too much. Let's go, let's go. No, it's fine. This is good. Like we're 
Yeah, this is what it's all about. Yeah, you know? we have like twenty. Just it it, it said it was gonna be an hour. It's like twenty minutes left, including questions. So this might be longer than an hour. Oh, I'm okay, thinking. that's fine. I'll, I'll do. I'll do more. <laughs> yeah. So basically, after that, after Tsunami did the little stabby stab, stabby stab, stabby stab. They go back to the mountain, and basically, they had. Uh, a smoke signal set up by burning some of the scrolls inside to help them lead them back into the mountain. Mm. And, like, they were able to get back inside, but because it's a smoke signal, Scar manages just to find them almost cool. instantly. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what'd you guys think? Uh-oh. Hey, guys, we're guys back. Think? Oh, by the way, there's a queen at our door. <laughs> anyway, guys, we have knock, this, like... Knock, knock, person. who's that? It's Queen Scarlet. Oh, Kestrel's like it's, it's the queen. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh. Crap. Yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's queen Kestrel's Star- losing, losing her mind. mind. <laughs> the air support. She's also so calm about that. Like she was like, only angry. Oh, hello. Were... I found yeah. you guys. Anyway, like, oh, you're going yeah, to my blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like they're like, oh, yeah, no, so basically, like, oh, and, and, and she just so casually, <laughs> so casually, just snaps so... dude's neck. Cas- yeah. So casually yeah. with it. Yeah. Oh yeah, they were fighting, and then I I think I remember. Yeah, she kills Dune by snapping his neck, and then Webbs was able to escape throughout the river, and he was told by Kestrel to warn the rest of the Talons, and they're basically all captured, and then they go to the Skywing Kingdom as prisoners, and that's where part one ends. Oh <laughs> wait, so, Yay, so she violence. she just grabs Dune with one Talon, and oh, just goes. Sh- but it, what if it's mine? Doesn't need to play with them, and just just casually kind of goes. Like snap I love that line though. What if yeah. it's my destiny it, to play with them? It, but with one talon. Yeah. It just shows yeah. her character like so well that she just like yeah. does not care. I, I found that the line she said to Dune before she did it, like I found that to be pretty brutal and I had to reread it. Like she literally said to Dune, I mean, what use is a crippled dragon who can't fly? I'm surprised you haven't killed yourself already, Sandwing, but I can take care of that Jeez. for you. That's how. That's like, how bad this wow. first book was. Oh my god! Like, we're not even into part two. Early weeks of we're not even into part two. <laughs> like this is just the first like hundred or so pages. Yeah, it's like three murders. Like enjoy this. <laughs> yeah, this I, is I, the uh, I, I, I have like, like four. I have like five pages of notes uh, on like the water cave. I'm like, okay, we just get past it. All right. The queen snap a lot of necks. I just realized. She <laughs> wait. Oh my. Okay. Never mind. I was about to say something. I shouldn't have said that. Woo. Okay. <laughs> also something I wasn't supposed to. So yeah, she it's just like snap casually snap. walks yeah. into the cave, takes them all prisoner, snaps yeah. Doom's necks, like, hello. Yeah. I'm here to take you to my arena. Yep. Like and, uh, I took why she doesn't like notes of like different I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, it's okay. Like it's just like she does so casually, I don't get how, but it's like I find it amusing how she just she just does that like hmm. so like calmly. Yeah, but I took some interesting notes of, like, different combat styles, because, like, I know it was noticed that, like, Skywings, like, tend to, like, go for the neck a lot in terms of their combat yeah, styles, definitely. and, yeah. like, prefer to utilize the air. And then Sea Wings, they utilize their tail, because it's Just, really strong. Yeah, strong, strong powerful tail. So aggressively. Yeah. Yeah, so I found that really interesting in terms of, like, combat skill, and I'm surprised, like, Webb's, like, surprisingly held his own during yeah, the Yeah, I, I, I yeah. didn't remember that when I first read the book. I did not remember, like, Webb's doing anything. Oh, I something else I would like to know. Um, oh, no, no, he he was able to fight. Yeah. Yeah. What? Like, and then, like, he was just like, I... Right? Mm. Mm-hmm. I think the, uh, like, if you... Well, there's so many scenes where, like, the, the, the sea wings, like, use their tail the slightest bit, and it just sends the other person back, like, reeling. But, like, tsunami time? Scene, yeah, tsunami, like, snacks clay, like, aggressively, and he's just like, oh, hell, and then it just continues, like... It's like, ow, okay. <laughs> ow, anyway. It's really <laughs> wild, honestly. So anyway, guys. Literally, Webbs was just like, I, I'm going to head out, and he just left them. Mm, he just, like, yeah. up and left. But, like, I mean, yeah, it was so I don't remember it. but he didn't even try to help. Oh, actually, no, he did. I think that was to save his own No, he stairs. did. He was able to fight against his own. Yeah, I don't think that was for I the took... dragon itself. Yeah. yeah. I took, like, so many notes and, like, the glow worms in the cave, and we just had to skip past it. I was like, oh, oh yeah, what was that? What do you think? Uh, so, 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 what, this is the, this is the notes, this is the notes I have. Um, the glow worms can stick on stuff and, like, seep in pain, like, poison, and they smell like rotten eggs. I never thought like, that it was yeah, glow worms. Like, oh my were... god, I thought it was, like, glue or, like, something. Yeah, I think, like, part of, like, Koi's scales were melting. Yeah, so it says, um... The glowworms are trying to dissolve the scales. 
And then yeah. Quake passed out, and Tsunami just woke him up by splashing cold water on him. Yeah. And the saddest part is his last thoughts before he passed out was, I failed them. And I was like, oh my god, they hit me in the yeah. heels. Can just you like... imagine if the series just ended? <laughs> anyway, guys, roll the credits, roll the credits, roll the credits. <laughs> That's Punch it. Roll okay, I'm saying right now there's gotta be an AU of that. Yeah. I'm right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then yeah. this, is, this is the rest of the notes I have on that. The river is frozen, making his body numb as the glowworms were gone, but the pain was still there. Ooh. And then the pain, oh, and this is was... the, the pain felt like tiny sharp teeth biting under the scales. Oh, I could not handle that. Yeah. And then, and then there's this oh funny part I remember. Mm -hmm. Tsunami said our ghost scares aren't like used for lighting up normally like they are, but they're used to track mates. I was like, that's so funny. I'm writing that down. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then she was like that. embarrassed. I mean, I'm like, ha ha ha. <laughs> I mean, Webbs isn't wrong, though. He isn't. <laughs> yeah. Someone needs to I mean, get Clay some Tylenol. Like, points of that. <laughs> Tylenol. <laughs> Just gotta get some. Some animals, anima, animi, animacies, animus, an whatever. I think it's anime. Yeah, anime. Yeah, anime. Anime. Make some time. yeah anime. Anime, probably. I usually call them anime, but I just had a brain fart then. Anime. Anime yeah. makes more sense than animus. Animus. Parallelogram. Animus. Parallelogram. 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 Language is kind of weird, honestly. Yeah. Is it like what? It's, 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 I think yeah, it's, it's actually octopuses. Like I'm octopuses. Sure. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna like switch it up after the podcast. I'm gonna like, send it in general. I'm like I'm gonna check this. <laughs> All right, we should probably like, get on to uh, part two, right? Like, yeah. Unless we got like any final thoughts for like part one, I think we were ready to like move it, on to part it, uh, two. It, it, it got the villain pretty yeah. well. It, it introduced the villain like just like basics. You know, it was a pretty it's a pretty good introduction, but uh, we get more in depth in part two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, like, Scarlet is probably, like, the, the villain of, like, book one, so, while yeah. the, the Sandwick sisters are, like, the, the villains of, like, the, the overall. Yeah. yeah. Marcia was kind of a villain, in yeah. my opinion, just because he just up and villain... abducted one of them, and I was just like, oh, okay, anyway. I think... Yeah. Anyway. He was, I would say he's antagonistic, but not yeah. a villain. Yeah, definitely. Like, there's a difference between... many bad things, except for trying to kidnap their friend. He's yeah, just kind of doing... There's a difference between, like, villain and antagonist. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think is. that's the right word. Like, don't get me wrong, he does some pretty questionable things later, which I'll mention, yeah. but I wouldn't call him, like, the, the villain. Like, I would say he's a main antagonist, and just another antagonist. A main antagonist, I think, would be yeah, probably he... the villain. Mm. But then, yeah. like, an antagonist is just an extra yeah. one, like Mars here. But, like, the main antagonist, I say, would be Scarlet. Mm. I still this book. For, for, for yeah. book one, yes, I would agree that Scarlet is the main uh, Alrighty, villain. on to part two, I guess? Part two, let's go. In the Sky Kingdom. Woo! Let's so go. Basically, yep, later that day, Clay wakes up. He's all chained to, like, this giant pillar next to, like, about 100 dragonets where his wings are clamped and, like, he's got, like, little wires hanging out from his talons. So if anyone tries to, like, get off, they would basically fall to their death and, like, bring other dragonets down with them. No. And... Wee. And, uh, yeah. They're, they're pulling... They're pulling... Uh, nowhere to be... They're, pull, they're pulling... A <laughs> yeah, Sunny and uh, Sunny and Gloria are nowhere to be seen right mm -hmm. now. Like we we don't know where they are, and then we're introduced to Peril, which is basically a strange looking Skywing. Yeah, <laughs> and then we find out. Yep, and then moments later, like she gets set down to like fight the Sandwing, like right next to Clay Horizon, I think. Horizon. And yep, Horizon, and he's uh he's basically burned to death. Oh yeah, because oh, yeah. so I have I don't know that. Uh, he was trying to fly or escape from peril, but I think Horizon flung himself either to die quicker or to see if he could kill her or to stop to try to kill her or stop killing anyone else or just like plain out just try to win it. Yeah, and I then think... he just flew himself into her, wanting to either end the pain and make it a quick death, burning him to the ashes. Yeah, yeah. I think he was gonna try I to like stab yeah. yeah. his tail if he did fast enough, but then it just went. Boom, but it didn't work. So he just sacrificed. He did. He did try, but it didn't he work. He tried, but it said it, 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 it like glinted it off. It fell horribly. Like he glinted so off like a. I don't remember the sentence. No, because like. I, I wrote a note out of that, and uh, the tail barb is basically the most deadly part of a sandwing, but it's also the most sensitive part of it, too. Because it's like, just so weird. Peril was able to burn that, yeah, um, Peril was able to burn that right off. I, uh, I have a note from, like, earlier. I don't think I ever read it. Uh, apparently, like, Dune used to, like, hit Kibli, or Oh, my God. Hit Clay with his tail <laughs> on if he, if he got something wrong. I was like, oh, my gosh. Jeez. Yeah. What if he actually slipped up one day? <laughs> 
We got a lot of physical abuse oh going my on. God. <laughs> this is the first book. Didn't they mention the first this book? is the first book too? This is for children, guys. And it just keeps getting better. Didn't they like not like say like that Horizons like try to like scratch Peril with like yeah. his tail? Yeah. And it got lit on fire. Yeah, you tried to Broke stop barbecue. it. Barbecue, I think, and then it just. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Kestrel would like blow fire at clay and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he was burned the most out of. Oh, I mean, even though we found out that mud, his claws weren't itchy or his claws weren't sore. His his wings. Oh, didn't from feel from dry. in the yeah. yeah at the part at the river, and then I, there was note. Queen Scarlet's favorite word is thrilling, and I think Peril's is blazing because she uses it a lot. Yeah, she uses blazing <laughs> yeah, thought, so much. Peril yeah, Peril's is blazing. Scar- uh, I thought Peril said that Scarlet uses that word blazing. No, it was uh, in the Scarlet's um, favorite word is thrilling, and oh that's confirmed God, by two. Thrilling. Eight. Yeah, blazing. Yeah, it was, that was like her word. I feel like Scarlet knows that she overuses the word because, like, at the like birthday thing, um, she says to the audience as if like she knows they're all tired of it. She's like, "Hey guys, don't you just think this is dot dot dot." Thrilling, and there's just no sound, and then there's another really? chapter. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I heard that somewhere that that's also like Tui's favorite word. Mm. Oh yeah, it's um, Tui's favorite thrilling. word too. <laughs> it is, yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. So, like, another few notes that I took down, like during the fight between Horizon and Peril, was like I also like took notes of like their combat styles, cause like. Peril, like, in terms of, like, actual combat, like, the most she does is, like, walk around and touch his Yeah, her like, oh my gosh. And, it's then, so and then, she was, yeah, was and then her queen was mad at her yeah. for not making it interesting. Like, girl, no. Well, yeah, because Horizon <laughs> killed himself yeah. by throwing himself on the Yeah, uh, I think, Peril. um, so Skywings are more based on, um, like, their wings, their claws, aerial combat. I think yeah, uh, sand wings yeah. are definitely like more like you know like kind of like peril in a way. They're just like oh, I'm just gonna use my tail. Um, sea wings because uh, yeah. yeah, like if they lose their tail, tail it's their biggest like defense mechanism or like mm-hmm. attack mechanism, so it, it'll yeah. be uh, harder. And from because sand wings are more like ground combat orientated than sky wings. Yeah, are. yeah. And then uh, I think yes, for, uh, ice wings in terms of combat, I feel like they might have the most the most amount of weapons in a way because like. They've got their claws, which is like getting scratched by four claws at once, which is what Carol says. I heard says. like then their frost breath. Ice yeah. claws are probably like the the, the sharpest. Yeah, they have to they're grip the ice. To, like, to grip the ice. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what I wrote down. Mm-hmm. I was just gonna say, uh, Constantly had to go. Yeah, at the same time, like uh, as well as like they were the two of them were fighting. Like we discovered that Glory is basically chained to like a marble tree and like kept as a little decor. Yeah. During the entire mm-hmm. thing, which is pretty funky. Pretty funky. Yeah, she was basically like artwork for like uh and like Scarlet. didn't she like when yeah. she was put in the sunlight she just exploded into different colors oh yeah that was like the yeah. best visual yeah, i scene. think she was like a more like yeah yeah supernovas of purple. She was, like, more and then clay was like is she drugged <laughs> yeah like there are drugs and alcohol confirmed it, in this it really <laughs> Oh my god, my chair is so like, loud. Th- she me- like, Dune mentioned that the Dragonhead song was basically a bar song, and the Clay Wonders of Glory was drugs. Yeah, yeah. and Scarlet, she's like, um, get the ten most sober guards to guard these idiots or whatever. Wait, she says that? Yeah, she's like, um, oh, I can find it, but it will take a while, so you guys can... Keep yeah, later, later in part two. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I just like, remember that part. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty wild. Wild stuff there, wild anyway, stuff. Anyway, Next one is our work. Yeah, basically, Peril is, like, the queen's champion who basically, like, rules the arena, and she basically uses her for, like, a lot of fights to make things interesting, because, like, that's the one thing that Scarlet loves the most is, like, fights and all that. Like, she prefers to do that a lot. And, um, basically, like, then I think the, um, I gotta look back at my notes. Like, I think they have, like, a heart-to-heart moment where... Like, they were basically talking about their nature. and Like, Clay says, like, like I don't want to like, be like I may the, have been born this. I, I may have been I born told. this, yeah. but I, I, well, I want to be able to choose my own destiny. I don't want to just be yeah, what I but, was when I was born. Yeah. I, I, you know, for all the talk about, like, the dragon and prophecy, like, I find it interesting that, like, not enough people talk about, like, the theme of, like, nature versus nurture. Yeah, yeah. Versus definitely, definitely. Um, that's not how I am. Like, I'm surprised, like, not a lot of people are talking about that. Yeah. Like, as much as I thought. It's like, it's, it's yeah. kind of an like, undercurrent that's of the entire thing, and it doesn't really get, like, talked about at all. The only pe- thing people really talk about is magical death spit and, um, thrilling, pretty much. 
and I think like during the the heart to heart scene with the uh, Peril and Clay, like she also mentioned that because she was born with fire scales, like she, uh, she burned her. Brother she had she had with like her her drag like her twin. Oh. Yeah, she like she right. like burned her like, twin in her egg. Is he in the audience? Yeah, that's what she that's what she was told. Yes. What she was told. Like. Yeah, and like dr- skywings with fire scales are traditionally killed by dropping them from the highest. Nice. They pulled a p- they pulled a hibbit here. She said that they pulled a hibbit here. <laughs> yeah, she said that. Yeah, her mother planned to like do that to, before Scar was sca- saved her by killing her mother. Yeah, and that's what she's told. Yeah. Oh, uh, and, um, also, I just, I just, I just realized this, and I'm sorry. I'm like going to like eight, eight different parts of the stories at once. But the reason Sonny can't be trusted is because they told her about a pile of rocks near the hole, and they couldn't fly, and they just put their heads out. And Sonny wasn't careful around doing it. Was gone the next day. I was like, that hurts, bro. That hurts. I feel bad for them. Wait, what happened? Uh, at the start of the book, I'm like jumping around, and I'm really sorry for this. I don't really mean to do this. I just keep on forgetting. No, no, go ahead. It's, uh, it's the fine. reason Sonny can't be trusted, like you know how we can't trust her with secrets. Yeah. Yeah, it's because they told her about, like, a pile of rocks near, like, the, the hole, you know, that hole in the mm-hmm. study room. Uh, mm-hmm. like just But they couldn't fly yet, so they just wanted to poke their heads out. And Sunny wasn't careful around Dune, and then the pile of rocks was gone the next day. Oh. I felt yeah. bad for her. The sky hole, yes, that one. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, think, that um, hurt to me. <laughs> I feel so bad for him. I think, I've, also, I've got um, Clay's quote about, like, the theme of changing, if you guys want me to read it out. Oh, yeah, yeah, read that, read that, read that. He's like, um, that's not how I am, Clay said. No matter what happened when I hatched, I can't feel this killer inside me that's supposed to be there. Maybe that's what the prophecy is about. Maybe the dragon that's supposed to show everyone how to get along without a lot of killing. And then it's like a bunch of people. He says that uh, he didn't want, he didn't realize that, like, he'd been saying it loud enough that a few people in, like, the front row of the seat had heard him. So, like, they were all, like, listening intensely in peril. Like, I guess that's yeah. when she first started to realize that. You didn't have to and then, then Peril had like a bad expression <laughs> on her face. She's yeah. Like, oh, oh crap, bro. Oh. And then and then like Clay's like no 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 okay no 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 no. Oh yeah. Okay. That was that wasn't automated, bro. That wasn't automated. <laughs> Alrighty. Um. Yeah, like that's that's the thing. Like I'm surprised like not many people are talking about like the nature versus nurture like aspect because I argue that's like one of the biggest themes of this book. Yeah, like it's like, through the entire arc. thing. I'm pretty sure. Definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. Like uh, for all like the the hundreds of words I hear about the Dragon of Prophecy, like that surprisingly isn't a, at the top of the yeah. list, which I find interesting. Like an example is also Glory. Like they're like I guess it's in their quote unquote nature to be lazy or whatever, but she's very different. And even like. I guess, I don't know, I think Clay was also, like, a bit rude to Raymond, so that, I don't know if it was, like, meant no, to be. No tsunami. Yeah, but he was, no, like, um, was... to stuff like, stuff was, like, I have a lot to learn when, like, Marcy interrogated him, he's, like, at least you're not a Raymond. But I think he means, oh, like, yeah. at least you don't have that's to be what, glory right. to have to and, deal and with then, And then yeah. Kestrel, like, always used to, like, say, like, what, you're stop being raised as a Rain Wing, you fight as well as a Rain Wing, you have, the, you have like, the fighting skills of a Rain Wing, don't be lazy like that. Uh, that... <laughs> That also did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, are you going to for George's fight? Uh, hold on, we gotta. Oh, I gotta mention. I gotta point out the scene real quick. If I can, I probably should have been more prepared for this thing. Yeah, basically after the heart to heart with Peril and Clay, the Clay and Tsunami and Starfight, they're all brought to like Scarlet's um, throne room, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And she was basically talking about how, like, she wanted to make, like, the things interesting for her hatching day in, like, two days. Yeah. And then she also wanted to see Starflight in combat. And I think, um, she asked, like, uh, hey, which one of you are, like, is willing and to fight Clay's an And then like, death? me! <laughs> At the same exact time. Yeah. Like, they, they all seem to and think that they I think that we also learned that wrong. Tsunami's probably the, yeah, Tsunami's probably, like, the strongest of them all, because she says that, like, she wins the, the most fights. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then, but then Clay got thrown in, because it's like, he was like, you never fought a Mudwing before, why didn't you throw me in? And they're like, like oh, right, okay, cool. me so. Excuse me, sorry. Uh, so, now we're on to Fajor's fight, if I'm right. Yes, mm-hmm. like, Clay basically volunteered to fight in the arena, the arena, arena, just to make sure, like, that, the arena. <laughs> I can't. I can't anymore, guys, I just can't. <laughs> Marcia and Arania. <laughs> Words are kind of weird. Honestly. English. Like, Arania. Like, how do I, how do I read? Uh, you just, uh, I think you have to like, I don't really know. I don't think I can either, to be honest. 
it's it's some of these it's these things called words and i don't think i know how to use them there's yet, strings so. of letters you know mm. the, the, yeah just like the wonders of language and yeah so basically after clay and uh Pejord fight and don't worry about me now this time it's Pejord. <laughs> yes finally <laughs> Pejord, Pejord, i don't know um yeah basically they fight and like clay's like Ford. very it's obvious that he doesn't want to uh, to fight at all. Like I noticed, he done a lot of like defense mechanisms. Mm. Like he kind of like just like he did like a couple of strikes and then immediately backed off and didn't try to like go in for more. Mm. And then I'm, I'm not sure if George did. did oh, George yeah, say like like didn't didn't, didn't no, no it was it's Starflight 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 was like pointing at his mouth like frantically and could like w w they don't have fire right right. <laughs> and he was like, oh, the ice breath! And by that, it was too late. I was like, mm. yeah, I found that scene so funny. He was like struggling so hard to remember something that should be common knowledge. He's like, sure. like they don't have, they don't have, have fire breath. Fire. Like, it was born there. It was born there. No, they have. It, it, it burned their palaces. They have frost breath. He has like a whole thought process before it happens. Fjord. Yeah. Fjord. Okay, okay it's, Fjord. it's Fjord. Oh, yeah, I just pronounce it Fjord. Yeah, like the J's. Fjord in my head. Yeah, I always pronounce it Fjord. Can I just say something? It's Did weird. everyone else, like, when they read the first book, pronounce per Peril Peril? Like, that couldn't just be me, right? Uh, I, th I, I, I think I miss... When I first read it, I misread it a couple of times, and it took me a while <laughs> to figure out it was Peril. Yeah, like, like, I, used oh, to say, I, I thought it was oh. Pearl the whole time, but it was Peril. <laughs> no, it was, it was Peril. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's like... To send in Wednesday. Yeah. I thought it was also interesting, like, the, the combat style for, like, Clay was very used to, like, utilizing his Skywing combat training from Kestrel. Yeah. And, like, Fjord said, like, he was, like, trained in Budwing techniques and it was very confused why he wasn't fighting the way he was. Mm -hmm. And, like, from, based on, like, later fights and, like, from what I can tell, like, Budwing combat, and this is all just speculation, I might be very wrong, is that they tend to, like, use, the, like, their bodies, because, like, they're the biggest tribe of all yeah, fighters. Yeah, yeah, because so they have they, the biggest wings. They tend to use, like, their weight, and I think they use, like, grappling and tackling movements to take down their opponents. Yeah, and then also tail stomping. And, yeah, and then when they're, t when they're together in, like, group formations, they tend to look out for each other like a little circle to, like, get it from all sides, mm -hmm. which I found really interesting. Yeah, I can't believe you, like, could so, get that from all the books, like, just fighting techniques. It's, it's incredible how you got that from, like, just the first book. I took... I took a lot of notes on fighting <laughs> techniques that I'm willing to admit. How many notes did you take? I probably have to look after the show, but I guarantee you it was a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna like put it in a bed and discussion I... like this, like the top bug, like took this many notes. <laughs> on like combat? It's like on combat. <laughs> on I, I, just combat. I took, no, on, for like the entire notes, I took 40 pages worth because wow. I figured like I'd rather be over prepared than under prepared. Uh, now, now I feel under prepared. <laughs> Well, well, don't, don't like it was mostly just like me writing like interesting bits of yeah. trivia and like paragraphs. So really, I only took like fifteen, twenty pages of notes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, right. so after the fight, like basically, Pjord was about to give him like the final frost with Ro until he's hit by venom, which basically causes like his eye and like face. Oh, that was so and then, like I remember Clay saying like I remember Clay saying like um. Like that was the worst scream, like the worst screech. It oh. was just pure. Oh yeah, it was like yeah, pure to agony. Be pure agony. And and um, I I thought that was just like so violent and so graphic. That's what I love about the first book, to be honest. It's so graphic. It mm. was like they really still for kids. They really didn't hold back at all when it comes to descriptions. Yeah, yeah. but like I felt I was like, like, just, like having... I just imagining that in my head. Like oh my gosh, that must have been like a cry. <laughs> Having like the scales like completely melt off was really Definitely. wild. Honestly. Wow. All right, we should probably keep things moving yeah, along. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Spending a lot of time. Okay. Yeah. So basically, after the fight, like Peril just comes out and says, "Hey, what was that all about?" Oh wait, don't don't tell me. You're probably gonna kill me. With and that. then Peril just like so, gave Clay some mud, right? I found that so funny. She's like, yeah, "Do you like, want to tell, um, tell me? You don't have to tell me, but I think you should tell me. But you you don't have to, by the way. But like, do you want to tell me? You're gonna kill me. You're probably gonna kill me with it, anyways. Like a chief, guys." <laughs> Yeah, she can't really, she's not really used to socializing, and I want to blame her, because she was basically trained to be a weapon for, like, really seven years. Fun. But it isn't her fault. That's all I'm going to say. It's not her fault, because yeah. she was raised like that. It would. It, 
Like, that's her idea of romance, is, like, talking about the ways she would kill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, wanna, I want to uh, do a... I want to, like, give my opinion on, like, Peril as, like, a character analysis um, at the end of the part two. Maybe I'll do, like, different episodes for, like, different characters. Oh, okay, cool, okay. Cool. That was something in the back of my mm. mind. But do, feel free to bring up some stuff right, here. cool, cool, cool. Yeah, um, basically after that, like... She was also told though, like she couldn't leave because she had to like eat uh, black rocks Whoa. because like one time she didn't eat mm-hmm. them and then she basically got sick. Like so dying sick. Told she yeah. Yeah, it was pretty. Like I can't believe that it, Stella it was pretty would, bad. Like, always been like that because like I I believe that um she said that you know she had an argument with Skull and like first time reading it, it doesn't clarify if she was like I'm angry with you I'm not gonna have it and then Skull's like oh, I'm gonna poison it or she, like I don't know. She just actually got sick. But I think that she might have done, like, the first thing. Like, yeah, it was revealed I'm later so in the book. I'm not going to have it. Yeah, mm. I think it was revealed later in the book that Scarlet poison... Because Kesha was like, is, that's a classic trick from Scarlet, poison in your food. Yeah. And Carol's like, is anything even yeah. real? <laughs> yeah, that was another thing. Existential crisis time. Anyway, moving on. So basically, Peril asks Clay to, like, hide behind him because, like, she was, like, forbidden to go to a trial tomorrow. Yeah. Mm. And like Clay said, because like she knew where Sunny was, and so Clay agrees to that. And he was also able to figure out because of like uh, Peril's story that Kestrel is actually her mother. Yeah. And then Peril was like, like, "That's surprising." And then like, Peril was like, "Scarlet, like oh, you lied to me." And then like Scarlet just like, "Oh, but it was for your own good. Do, would you want to see? Would you want to know that your mother like, could have taken, could have uh, killed you or taken you, but she didn't?" And the, yeah, Clay was a lot smarter than people get give him credit for. He was able to figure definitely. that out. Yeah, like and then like and then, and then like Kestrel just like gets so angry. Like literally the moment he um like the moment he saw the burn marks he uh, he said like a theory popped into his head but before he could explore it like something happened yeah Clay Clay should really yeah because like should, like apart from like, a few parts like how in Fjord like he had to think of the ice rack that was like a stupid Clay moment <laughs> but, like other parts he he's really intelligent sometimes yeah to gamble nature yeah. versus nurture not really but I guess he, it's just different. He's a lot- I feel like he falls more to, like, the street smart side as opposed to, like, book smart. Yeah, definitely. I think that's, like, a good yeah, way to Yeah, so basically, it. like, he's more pe- people-based and, like, learning stuff from, like, scrolls. Yeah, definitely. Yep, so moving on to the the trial, basically, Kestrel's being tried for treason from, like, leaving Scarlet seven years ago. Yeah. And when we got Vermilion, like, Scarlet's oldest uh, child saying, like, yeah, she's basically guilty. She disobeyed the order. And then Vermil- uh, who Osprey? Was it? Osprey. Osprey, which is also like Peril is like best friend. Like, friend I is guess old. the closest thing she has to he, a friend. He's really old. Yeah, she to, and he was there with the Peril uh, tail. He, he was there when Scarlet. Scarlet before she got her throne. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And he mentions that. No, 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 no. He Scarlet already had her throne. Osprey was oh, yeah. there when they found Kestrel yeah. at the river. Mm. Yeah. That's where Osprey was. It was, yeah, basically, Osprey was, like, Peril knows a little bit about the scorching things to Osprey, saying, like, before we had queens and armories, like, he would have just died, and scavengers killed a lot more dragons back then, but now, because of our queens, we rule the whole world, and dragons have help when they need it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's almost like, they got, like, a bit of a familial bond, and, like, in technical aspects of it, just, like, looking after for an entire tribe. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. And that's why, like, Queens are probably more important than kings in this universe. Yeah, because di- uh, like, wait, no, that's just spoiling. Never mind. Um, can't do that. No, they we're keeping it to dragon yeah. and prophecy only. Remember. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like being a king in this universe is like an entitled thing. Like it's only used on the business. Yeah, didn't like it. didn't Scott like kill her husband? No, like, wasn't it was. Really? I, I I don't recall that. All right, all right. I, I didn't know. We'll probably it's probably later. We'll probably. Mention I wasn't sure. Later. Oh my god, my chair is so loud. So yeah, basically. Um, Osprey tells the story of like Kestrel's um, dragonets, mm-hmm. right? One that was born with too much fire, one that was born with too little fire, and like I think Scarlet caught up to her and said like, "Hey, I'll let you back in and forgive you for all this if you kill one of the, your dragonets." Yeah. So and so horrible. Scarlet decided to kill the the one with too little fire, and then like Kestrel, uh, sorry, Scarlet said like, "Okay, well I'm gonna kill you both anyway," and so <laughs> Kestrel tried to escape with peril, but couldn't she was only able to grab her for like a little bit before the burn marks were too much and she yeah and then Peril, I, I, what, what was peril thinking like hmm i'm a, i i almost killed my brother and i, I, I can tell my mother's in pain i'm gonna touch her face 
Yeah. Like, but... I mean... Oh, wow. Like, I'm surprised that, like... Because, like, in other things, I, it kind of feels like her flame fire scales, whatever. It kind of changes, because, like, she touches, like, her eyes and or whatever, he bats it with his tail, and it sets on fire. She touches Kestra on the face, but and it's it, just a burn mark. Yeah, it, it, but I think it's, like, right. more... I think, like, at birth, it's probably, like, less powerful yeah. than it is, like, later. Mm. So I, I think yeah. I think that, that's an excuse, but like I'm not sure about any other events. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably like explained later yeah. on in the story. So after basically Peril like learns the tr- truth, like she basically calls forth like the the champion shield mm. law, which is basically where the queen's champion can fight a, a battle for a prisoner, and, <laughs> and if she they win, they mother. get the prisoner goes free. Mm-hmm. And then Scarlet realized, like, wait, someone like, told me that. Where'd you get so that old she, law uh, from? I read and it. She's like, you. It looks at Osprey and she just. Yeah, she read it with her burning skills and she basically fine. grabbed. I mean, and he and grabbed Osprey. She pulled Hivitcher again, once more. Yeah, Osprey, like, dragged him all the way up to nearly the highest point of, like, the spires and then dropped him. That's... And, like, Peril, like, she actually managed to burn off a bit of the wires from Clay. Yeah, b- and like she tried her hard. I think she tried to like save Osprey before like she realized she couldn't touch yeah, him. Yeah, he no, like, she she did touch him, him, but it burned it too badly. So it was and kinda- I, I thought it was really so- stupid in my opinion because like couldn't you like go right before he hits the ground, grab him just for a little bit? Like I understand it might burn. Oh, like, well, I mean, if she grabs him while he's falling, but, at, but at least if it was about to hit, if if you could like lessen the fall, like just hurt. Because I bet he wouldn't have died if he if she did it really late. But then. His tail probably was just paralyzed. Yeah, his tail was paralyzed, him. so he couldn't flap his wings. Mm. Yeah, he he landed at an awkward angle with ripping and snapping bones. Oh, but that's graphic. He's still alive. Like, and she was like, "Oh, he's not yeah, dead." He, she's he, like, "He will be soon." And then she's like, "Oh my oh. gosh, Scarlet." Yeah. He he probably like died from injuries like shortly Definitely. after. Like she just changes her like preferences on like her soldiers at like every single like moment. Yeah, like, he served her for thirty years, yeah. and she's like, "Oh." Oh, you like you told my like and Osprey the daughter how to read. She, yeah, she's willing to like kill her own like yep people without any hesitation. She only does the trials for the drama and to prove that she's a quote unquote just and fair leader. Fair and just queen. Yeah, except for really like I agree leader. everything with you. Except for like yeah. the moment when um rigged. It's a, it's, a, it's a dictatorship. It's an anarchy. It's just, <laughs> we need we need to overthrow the government. <laughs> Like, um, when... It was all wild. Yeah, it's not fair because she just throws peril in every time someone disagrees with her. Yeah. Yep. Alright, then after that, like, Clay realizes that, you know, Burn is going to be coming soon for, like, that... Sunny. Scar- um, yeah, Scarlet's hatching day, and so he realizes that they're gonna have to escape right away. So he tries to, like, escape with, like, the fire, with the, the wire that was used, that peril burned off earlier. And, I, and then as a result, it was, like, one of my favorite scenes in the first book where, like, he was able to play, like, somewhat of a, of a tune. makeshift violin. And then, and then everyone... Yeah, a melody. Yeah, with his... With his All the prisoners. Bird, and then everyone started, started singing the sing. dragonets are coming. Stop that infernal yeah, like noise. Then, and then Bird's like, stop that infernal noise. I have that. And it's like, whoever sings yeah. that, burn their tongue out. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh my god. Yeah. I mean, this. I mean, it gave him hope. There were still people that believed in the prophecy despite everything. So mm-hmm. I thought that was yeah pretty interesting. I he's like the fact that he like drive. he's like a nice moment and he's still roasting like his friends. He's like, he didn't know <laughs> who it was, but it wasn't tsunami because these dragons could actually sing. And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> wait, uh, yeah, wait, I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it was noted that tsunami has a terrible singing voice while yeah, Starflight like, sings oh, yeah. tenor. Yeah, he um he heard uh her off. Key out of tune voice or whatever, and Starflight's pure tenor. Tenor? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty wild. Whack. Uh, yeah. So basically, after that, like, like um, I think Scarlet Soldiers like brought in like the three of them, like Clay. And then Starflight, everyone was like, I thought, I thought you started the music. Basically discussing. Yeah. And like, she was discussing her plan with. Burn. Uh, yeah. Burn. And then, and then Clay's Saying, like, like, you probably shouldn't discuss oh. it right in front of us. And you're like, you aren't gonna survive. It's like, okay. Oh, no, the plan was, like was to have them all killed oh, yeah, in the funny. arena, so everyone would, lo- would lose faith in the prophecy. Mm. And apparently, they wanted and to so hang they... their bodies out of the walls. Oh yeah, She's like, like oh yeah, my Scarlet gosh, it was pretty nutty. Yeah, a little bit. Confused. And then, and and then like they were like accusing each other like. I thought you started it, and then it's like I thought you started it, and then Aaron Clay's like, "No, I started it." And they're like, "What?" 
I, could, I didn't expect yeah. you to do it. Clay has a good plan for once. <laughs> yeah. And then Peril was just like, hey guys. Yeah, they're like, oh, oh yeah, she just appears like, what's up? <laughs> she like, walked oh, through like, the like, firewall like, created from the black rocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, do you think and the then... black rocks is the one that she eats? Yeah, definitely. I, yeah, I think so. Like, they, like as soon as they're set on fire, them. like they, they build like a firewall and they cannot be put out in any way unless they burn on their own. Oh. I bet, I, I, wait, hold on. I bet that's the same rocks that they use at the very uh, start of the prologue. Oh! They, they, yeah, that's what I was gonna mention. Like, those are probably the same rocks. Yeah, that way they don't have to carry around. You know what it reminds fire. me of? It reminds me of, like, Minecraft Netherrack. Because it would, like, <laughs> logo out, right? <laughs> uh, I, I was wondering when we start breaking the Minecraft discussion <laughs> about an hour and a half. I played too much Minecraft, I'm sorry. I've gotten, like, four days in, like, one world consecutively. Oh, my God. Uh. So anyway, yeah. it took us long enough to get here. Okay, I gotta. I gotta keep moving. We gotta yeah, keep moving. Yeah, yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad. So now that they're all together, they figured, you know what, we're gonna have to escape before the this the hatching day ceremony mm -hmm. starts, and so they try to convince Peril to like, you know, take them to tsunami, which she kind of like reluctantly agrees to do so because she just tsunami. had to move like the. F Tsunami's with them. What? Oh, no, Sunny. It was yeah, Sunny was with them. first. I Sunny. Yeah. I was saying Sunny. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I heard Tsunami. Like, I was sunny. like, what? Mm. No, it's it's Sunny. <laughs> Did I mispronounce it? Like, an hour and a half into this, I kind of... Like, <laughs> you see, about. I just keep on talking, and if you don't shut me up, I'll just keep on talking. That's why I never lose, like, my train of thought. I just have to, like, repeat it in my mind. <laughs> yeah. So, basically, once they finally, like, get out of the, like, the little firewall they've been stuck in like they noticed like the, the both the skywings and the sandwings were having like a little dinner party before the festivities exactly. tomorrow mm -hmm. and they noticed like Su sunny kept in like a, a golden bird cage for her yeah. she wasn't like chained up like anyone else like oh. she was like considered like a curiosity yeah and also think, she was like yeah. fed like a queen according to peril and peril sounded jealous <laughs> dang yeah. i wish i got that treatment <laughs> And uh, I think before they were about to escape, like they noticed uh, Scar coming up from the sky. And like, like, no, like, Clay, no, so, like... so Peril, uh, like, Clay asked Peril, like, like, Peril said, I can't open the door from here, so I have to, like, go out the, the side and, like, open it. And then Peril, like, halfway through, like, decided to go war on Scarlet, and then, like, no, that was in the in. graphic novel. It was? That was in the graphic novel. Oh my god, yeah. I remember. Yeah, in the other one, one, um, what, I think what happened. Oh, now I think I know how They happened. were still in the cave. Like, the. I'm, like, merging things together. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah. I think it was, um... Yeah, so before the... Oh, you go, you go. Go ahead. No, go ahead, B. Oh, okay. Um, so during the scene where, like, you know, the, like, Peril's, like, teaching them how... I mean, like, showing them to run away, and she's, like... She... When they, they look into the hall and see everyone there, and then they all run across when, the, like, Scarlet's not looking. So Tsunami goes, um, Clay goes, whoever, blah, blah, blah. And then Peril's, like, a little bit late, and then she's, like, sorry, I had to wait till the Queen look away, looked away. I think maybe that was when she might have warned the Queen, or, like, maybe she did before. And then Clay's like, you gotta get out of here. And, she, and then he just like, grabs her. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and that's when they, we realized that uh, Bloodwings born from blood red eggs are immune to fire for the most part. Yeah, yeah. for the most like, part. It, get, it, get, it, still leaves, it still leaves some marks, but they heal up pretty fast. Yeah, also when he gets blasted by fire, he just absorbs it with the So... So yeah, Scarlet takes them all back and says like, find the ten most sober sober guards to block to keep them from escaping. <laughs> Alcohols and water. And like promise. Tsunami says like, Kai, maybe you shouldn't let psychotic dragons fall in love with you when we're trying to escape. <laughs> and it's just like what? He's like who? Yeah, he's like really oblivious to everything. This is a dumb claim. This is a dumb claim. Okay. <laughs> it, it was a clay. It was a certified clay. Moment. Certified <laughs> dumb clay moment. So, sometimes clay has the smart moments, but like certified dumb clay moment. Right it's here. like, oh my god, I just pulled the gre greatest achievement of my life. What a clay but moment. I, think, I stubbed my toe. What a clay I mean, moment. Smart when he, clay was smart when he needs to be, but this is like one of the moments where he just. Except just for the fire. I mean, the block there. Yeah, and so the next morning, basically, the three of them are all dragged from sleeping. <laughs> And Tsunami is immediately put into the arena while <laughs> Clay and Starflight are right next to Scarlet and a burn in, like, the little area. Yeah. And basically, Tsunami is paired up with, like, one of the ceiling prisoners who tried to start, like, a prisoner revolt because he didn't want to fight anyone, mm -hmm. and that failed. And as a result, he was dehydrated for months. His name is Gil. Was it Gil as a ceiling's? Right? Gil. Yes, Gil, it was Gil. Gil. Okay, cool. Yeah, he was dehydrated for 
so months. long. Until he's finally ready. Yeah, I, I think, I think so they funny... take away his drinking water as well, because I can look like... Yes. They, they did. Water. Like, there was a point, like... Oh, um, uh, I think Gil, like, resorted, like, drinking to his own blood, because yeah. he was... A okay, I, I, I think, I think this might have been in the blood. chapter book, or it might have just been in the graphic novel. I just wanted to say this real quick. One of, like, you know how, like, the shining, like, kill him, or, like, other things like that? One of them drown says, him. Oh, yeah, drown dude. him. Drown like, him. Like, what, 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 what do you mean, drown him? <laughs> Someone <laughs> missed out on a biology lesson. Um... <laughs> Oh but yeah, him. and then like then they start to fight and like tsunami's uh, tsunami's faster and she can like get off things and then she uh she like pins him down right. Mm. Yeah, basically she pins him down like she didn't want to fight. She didn't want to kill him, him either. And but... that's why I was like, "Are you chicken?" And t- and to m- and the thing is, tsunami snapped his neck to make a point. Yeah, she did that out of pure spite, like. <laughs> like to make it a point. It was basically like this. She wasn't gonna it was do basically it. Like, like, oh, maybe you can't handle war. Snap. You know, it was like this, like, I'm not gonna kill this, the, the sea wing, and then Scarlet was like, do it, you won't, and Tsunami's like, bet. Bet, <laughs> bet, yeah. guys, bet, she bet. She didn't do it at all, and then it's like, yeah, mm. it's like, like yeah. But this, yeah is a she, ch- this is a children's book, she, my, may I remind you. She killed, she snapped Gil's neck out of pure retaliation. And to make a point. Yeah. 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 She was about to, like, spare him, too, which I found interesting. Yeah. Mm. And the, guys, this is a child, children's book, by the way. I don't know if you knew that already. You know, we're we're tackling <laughs> things about war, death, and how easy the innocent. I think can be it might be. So yeah, book. this is all for kids. Yeah, it's a children's book. It, it's a little bit of a. Fu- it's a different kind of children's <laughs> book. We got like. Anyway. We got like Pete the Cat as a children's book. Then we have Wings of Fire as a children's book. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, take take that Netflix. You don't deserve this. <laughs> <series. laughs> We got Captain yes. Underpants as a children's book, and then Wings of Fire as a children's book. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, I, re- I actually read the Captain Underpants series. Yeah, that was the best series. series. Anyway, to like, back to like, like, like Wings of Fire didn't come out till 2012, and I was like fourth grade at the time, so I didn't yeah. get like the chance to like. Anyway, to back to actual Dragon Book. <laughs> yeah, right to the funny. Back to the funny Dragon Adventures. <laughs> so after that, like, basically. T- Scarlet tries pairing like Tsunami and Starflight and to fight like each hug. other, and they decide to hug it out. Hug yeah. it out. Friendship, they friendship is like magic, fighting. you know. Yeah, you know, maybe the real wings of fire was the friends we made. Stop. Like. Else stop. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Look, we aren't. We are. We anyway, aren't. Wa- um, dude, okay, we aren't watching My Little Pony. Okay, we're reading a book about dragons. Okay. <laughs> okay, moving. Uh, yeah, so basically. Uh, Scarlet says, you know what, friendship is lame, and so she decides to send some scavengers in to go fight them. And then, they, then like, they, one they of them almost, really like, stabbed Starflight in the eye. Oh, yeah, that was, like, a yeah, yeah, that... Yeah, it's like... <laughs> yeah, Starflight managed to, like, throw her off. Starflight managed to throw her off, and I think one of the scavengers at Tsunami knocked into, like, the the spectator area, like, the, it got eaten. Like, right. immediately, no hesitation. And I, you? <laughs> it was just like, ah! Chomp. Yeah, then... Basically, Scarlet like was getting like she was like, all right, this kind of this is kind of lame, you know. Let's throw in the ice wing prison. And then, and then like burns like you, go, like, you, you sur- this is a really bad way to do your hashkane. Like, We're like oh, commenting yeah. on how bad Scarlet oh, oh. is at running her kingdom. I forgot to mention there was one part that I think like may have been the deciding factor for a later action that I want to mention yeah. is that basically like once scavengers were brought in like sca- like burns at scavengers to kill the dragon it's of the prophecy. Are you mad? And then Scarlet said, well, it only took one to get your Yeah, mother. that was the funniest part of that book. <laughs> oh, yeah, it probably did affect yeah. that. Like, just, just like a little yeah, bit of Yeah, like, that was, that was wild. Yeah, definitely. I was just like, damn. She's like, can't believe you have your um, allies with them. And then the next, like, chapter, oh, it only took one to kill your mother. And Dang, just bro. immediately swords her, like, and lifts her tail. That's that's mm-hmm. I think that's the best part of that book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, basically, like once the ice wings like get into the arena, that's when Moro. Like, hey guys, like, we're gonna be taking this guy. See up. ya. Like, we're gonna take Starflight it, back, and then Scarlet. What about like, the prisoners? No, I want to like, see a Nightwing the... fight. Okay, kills them all. All right. And then bye. She... Yeah, that's another thing. Like. They literally kill all the Ice Wing prisoners in the well, arena. I don't think he deserves Especially, it. What if this I think like, I remember. <laughs> they really did, because like they've been enemies for like the longest time. Yeah. And I also note that uh, 
Clay like was actually sitting next to a nice wing prisoner who like was looking kind of sad, and like the song actually brought her hope. And now I think about oh. it, she was probably killed one more. Oh so my along. gosh, you're right. I like. Yeah, that's the saddest part. Though. Like I've always looked at her. She's the one that had the, a neck the stretched up to the moon or whatever she's seen. The unnamed ice wing got mauled to death oh. by the night wings, and that's. Dude, that is pretty so horrifying. Sad to me. She was actually like my favorite. That's pretty. Character. I don't know why. I really like that's them. pretty horrifying when you think about it. Jeez. I don't think any of them deserve that because they might have been like actual good people. Or dragons. Yeah. yeah. Like all of them were. I think at the beginning they were all like prisoners of yeah, war. Yeah, like it's not their fault that their queen chooses like to ally with someone. Yeah, sea wings and sand wings I think are the most common prisoners if I remember correctly. Yeah, definitely. And then the with like, the occasional Skywing that like ticked <laughs> off Scarlet and Mud and uh, Clay was actually noted to be like the first yeah. Mudwing prisoner mm. in the arena, along with Starfly being it the was, first. It was it was like Ice Wings, Sea Wings, and uh, Sand Wings, right? Yeah, the, those are the most common prisoners in the yeah, arena. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, and um, like Blaze and Blisters on them. Um... Yeah. Yeah, um... And then, basically, once the, once the execution is done, like, Morosio picks up Starfighter and says, Yo, you're yeah, coming with bye. me. Bye. We're gonna dip. We're leaving. Bye. We're gonna dip, bro. And Scarlet, she basically continues on the whole, uh... Anyway. ...spectacle as if nothing happened. And then she decides, you know what, let's activate the champion shield off. We're gonna face Peril off with Clay. And, and then Clay's like, oh, like sh And then Peril, yeah. as if she didn't hear it, was like, damn, I knew, I knew she was gonna do this. I think what's interesting is that when she was fighting Clay, like she, like from what I could tell, she didn't have as much physical strength as Clay did, cause like she's yeah, not used she to like having her opponent and, like, fight back. Yeah, she just and like backs him up and they immediately just die. And cause I don't just, think she, like, I don't what, think she's used to like them not dying in one hit, so she doesn't know a lot of like actual like battle. Well, I mean, she doesn't know what to actually teach her, cause like it's not like she can. She's practice seen anything. like. She's likely seen, like, other Dragon Spider and it was probably trained from a young age, but she didn't, like, have to properly Cause, cause utilize she could it because most them of them hit. died. Mm. Yeah, like, a few hits anyway, so it wasn't necessary. Yeah. So, yeah, she was, like, kind of struggling with Clay, and that's when Clay used, like, the, the pocket sand. Pocket sand! <laughs> Did you go! Her face. You know what it reminds me of? If you guys have seen She-Ra, like, that one part... No, I have that, not. The, I have, I'm going to say if, this, if just anyone knows it in the crowd. That one part where, like... Tongue glass shores, like who's so tough now? And Catcher's just like, <laughs> but puts sand in his eyes and he just dies. That's that's the funny part. Yeah. Anyway, back to the fire. It, it's pretty. <laughs> yeah, back to the funny. Back to funny. This guy is for children. <laughs> yeah, Clay and Peril basically like argue again, like nature and nurture. Like Peril basically chose to like embrace like the 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 monstrous na like nurture she was mm -hmm. grew up with. While Clay like wanted to reject it, saying like. We should like try to end the pro like make the prophecy come true without having a lot of dragons die. Yeah, and I think what's interesting is that like Clay says like he wants like the prophecy to like happen without a lot of killing and without no killing, which I found interesting because like he kind of like accepted like the true nature. Of and didn't he of like trade. one time say like I'd rather fight? It's like <laughs> you what? Yeah, in the beginning like he was like mostly fight, but that that wasn't to kill. Yeah, it was just point. like practice, right? Yeah, it was all practice. Yeah. What was that thing about? So basically, before, so now that Clay has like Peril pinned down, that's when Glory decides to come come up from like a tree, and yo, like snap that, the that the description chain. was so graphic. And she basically spat her that. venom at burn, which she basically used Scarlet as a shield. Wait, does anyone <laughs> to, like, have the book with them? So like, see, like those ex that exact like writing stuff? Yeah, so yeah, graphic. I have it. I have the book. I have it right in hand. So let me that, see that was like so find. graphic, right? Like, it was like, you could see her was, jaw yes. unhinge. Like, that, yeah. that would be so graphic, wouldn't it? Oh, here now, it now is. I have to, now I have to entertain the crowd by myself. Like, anyway, guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it hit, uh, it hit in the side of her face. Yeah, I have it here if you want me to read it out. Yeah, please, please. Um, Go ahead. So, it was like, uh, did she just say what I think she said? Clay said, blah, blah, blah. And it's like... Clay looked around to face the balcony as Glory suddenly reared up in a blaze of sun, fire, gold, and cobalt blue. She snapped her thin chain like a reed and launched herself off the mountain tree. Her mouth was wide open, hinged like a snake. This is really cool. She hissed, yeah. and a jet of black liquid shot out of her two bullet stains. Burns shoved Queen Skull in front of her and shot into the <laughs> sky. She just immediately leaves. I didn't realize that she like, shoved her in blue. And there's a glory yeah, she did. Queen yeah. Scarlet on I mean, the side of her face. 
the scouting queen to get to school. I mean, in, in Heights, uh, yeah. In hindsight, she did say like her mother died. From <laughs> yeah. She made your mom joke. She, she made your mom joke in her face <laughs> mental health. Yeah. It's not like you. Yeah, she's like, like, it's like it's your really simple. Like, this is like a you problem. Not gonna lie. Scarlet really says it's like this is like a you problem. It is a you. Yeah, problem. and that's when like. And that's when Peril decided to like finally like uh, get the the wing bindings and mm -hmm. all that off. Oh my god, the wing bindings! Like, before they're ready. I'm sorry, but like just the the fact that he said it was like they had been rolled over and then pinched, it just sounded. Agony. I mean, they've been. Yeah, I think. It's, it's, I mean, they've been prisoners for like five days. I counted. I feel like it's the only thing felt like because I broke my finger once and like like my three fingers, three fingers had to be like plastered together and it looked really really not good. I think it's what they feel <laughs> like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, I just—I can just imagine it so well, like, oh, sounding like a little Morbius. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. All right, back to the actual book. <laughs> oh, I didn't yeah, realize. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Before, like the the three of them do escape, decide to escape. They realize they gotta go get Sunny, so they went to go get her and managed to burn her out of the. Peril's like, oh, the, the bird cage that she was in, and. Yeah, she was kind of really reluctant to go up through it. Like, was like, Peril is kind of like a. Cinderella at this point. Yeah. Sorry, my chair's like super loud, and I'm trying to like scoot up, and it's like. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> I know. I got like, I got like a different chair for this because like. I don't have a different chair. Have, it's like, like you like the, the squeaking from it. It's so annoying. Mhm. Mm anyway. Um. Where were we? Uh, Sunny just got uh, freed. Yeah. After Sunny was freed, like the like Starfire is still missing, so they're basically gonna have to go on without him at this point. Mm. And then, like, Clay says, oh, wait, we gotta go get a Kestrel. And then Tsunami and Glory, they say, wait, wait, no, we're not doing that. Like, <laughs> they, they, she tried to kill Glory, like, a couple days ago. You're insane. You <laughs> are insane. And then, basically, it took, like, a bit of convincing for Clay to convince Tsunami to go with them while Glory and Sunny decided to meet with them outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and basically, they finally got back and... Yeah, the, the the reunion between Castro and Peril, like, it wasn't with open hostility, but it wasn't, like, friendly either. Yeah, it was kind of like, why the f did you leave me? I was about to say, and I didn't feel like it, you know? Yeah, I felt horrible, because it looked like Castro, like, really, was, like, really sad about it, and then she was just being the usual snarky self, and her daughter's like, I don't think you're going to be a good influence uh, on me, because I'm a murderer, wait, and then, like... to join back. Here, I'll, 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 ca I'll catch Con up on it. Okay. Okay, yeah, you can see that. And so, like, they were able to, like, fend... And then, like, the guards were coming back. Yeah. And, uh, like, yeah, Peril basically slashed, like, one of the guards' throats, like, caused him, like, smoke up in his throat, and was like... And then Clay's like, really just bad. run. Run. <laughs> like, run. just get out. Are we part two yeah. or part three right now? Part three. Wait, no. We're, we're near the end of part two. Near the end, yeah, of, near part the end of part two. So. And so, basically, they decide to get out, and, like, they're all reunited now, away from the, the Skywing Palace for, like, the first time in, like, a couple of mm -hmm. days. And, like, the, the reunion was kind of, like, like, it wasn't with open hostility, but it wasn't, like, a warm reunion either. Mm, yeah, it was like, And that's when they have... Definitely not a warm reunion. And that's when they have the the, the plan to, like, le leave and go find their families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think like Glory said like uh, oh hey maybe Peril is the the wings of sky. No no she that wasn't was that even was looking wasn't at that him. no yeah that was, it was Glory. It was no, Glory. That was Glory. Sorry. Yeah it was Glory. Yeah. She said like maybe Peril is the wings of sky. Yeah just I'm gonna say And yes. like she wasn't even looking at the anyone else when she said that she was just concentrating on the butterflies and. Else. And like yeah. and then when Clay is like oh my god yeah her like her ears turn like red like slightly mm -hmm. and I was just like, oh, yeah because like she was a bit irritated when Clay agreed with that. It's just that was a Clay moment but a not a good Clay one. moment. It was a certified claim moment. moment. Certified claim <laughs> moment. And yeah, Peril like said like no, like I can't do it because like I'm not safe from the world, mm -hmm. or the world's not safe from mm -hmm. me yet. And she decides to like stay in the the Sky Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And like Kestrel was like, she said like, well, you guys can do whatever you want, whether you live or mm -hmm. die. I don't really care. And like she was basically willing to dip before like. She saw Sunny hurt, and then she decided to tell them, like, if they ever need her, just, like, send a message through through the jag of Jade yeah. Mountain. Mm -hmm. And, like, we will learn a little bit about where they got the eggs from. Is that uh, Tsunami's egg was from the Queen's Hatchery of the Sea Kingdom, and Morosir brought Starflight's egg, and Dune found Sunny's egg and in the desert hidden near the And then Webb just, like, grabbed Glory's egg from somewhere. 
Yeah, we. She doesn't say where because she doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> like she literally just said, "I don't know. You're not important." So I feel so like it, she was so harsh too. She was just like, "Oh well, um, I didn't bother caring because exactly. I didn't think you'd be important to me." Yeah. Con didn't care plus bad. L plus ratio plus you have fire skills <laughs> plus didn't care. <laughs> yeah, and then, um, yeah, like. Clay knows that, like, Kesho kind of cared about Peril enough to, like, grab her as a hatchling and get the scorch marks on her palms. It's like, thanks, I could have got, gotten the other one and survived. So, so, it was, like, a somewhat of a reunion. Like, Kesho actually kind of offers uh, Peril to come with her, but Peril says, like, she's not ready yeah. yet. Mm. And so, like, she said, look, I'll come find you later. Mm. And so, like, before Kesho leaves, she tells Clay if he's not going to be... He's not going to be any abuse of others if he can't fight and kill to defend him and to think about and then, that. And then Clay's like, she's right. And everyone's like, no, no, she's not right. And Clay's like, yeah, but she I is. Think, I think what's interesting, because like, it used to be like about open hostility, because I think earlier they speculated that the reason that Kestra was angry is because they reminded her of her dead children at yeah, the time. Yeah, definitely. So it kind of like, over the course of like the novel, it turned to less open hostility Clay. and more tough love. At least that's how I, I interpreted yeah, welcome it. Back, I'm, Clay, I'm, welcome I'm back, I'm going to hear what you guys think. Um, Someone. <laughs> so yeah, basically after Kestra left, like Peril decides to like come like stay behind the in the Sky Kingdom, and then they notice like a patrol of like Sky Wings and Sand Wings in the air. So that officially makes them fugitives now. Oh uh, yeah. yes, you are fugitives. Run. <laughs> yeah. So they like their plan is to like go to the the Diamond Spray Delta, which is where Clay's family lives. Basically, yes. And. They have to like go through the water so they can avoid being seen by this guy. Mm. So they had to cover Sunny in mud while Glory uses her camouflage over tsunami. Yeah, and then Clay, Clay's just swimming, right? Yeah, yep, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. I swear just keep he'd be swimming. suing. I I hope I don't get copyrighted if I did. Oh, no. uh, just you can, like, make like white like, noise. Get out like call. nobody heard anything. <laughs> yeah. I'm laughing at what someone put oh, in the story. Oh, uh, Lucy Lemon asks, like, after you finish, like, can I chat with you for a bit in the Outclaw server VC? Well, I think at the end, maybe we will do, like, a little Q&A yeah. from, like, the audience to, like, answer, like, some questions. Um, but let's finish this up. Mm -hmm. we're, we're at part three now. All right. So, basically, in part three, like, this is a kind of a scene that was kind of omitted from the graphic novel, which I was a little bit... Upset oh, about. Yeah. It's the scene where Glory seemingly left the dragon at Sedesti because she felt really unwanted when Clay said, Oh, maybe Peril might be our winter yeah, sky. I was we'll like, just toss that was devastating. Glory to the side. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, like Clay was actually willing to like abandon the entire plan of going to the Monk Kingdom and straight for the, the rainforest to find Glory. Which I feel like wow. was an important scene that the, the graphic Definitely. You know, on. but they yeah. also almost a prologue. Like, come on, yeah. that was the best scene. That was, that was a really good scene, but, but anyway. We're not here to talk about, like, the graphic novel, yes, though. That's, so, that's, that's yeah, a story for next time. It was Tsunami's idea to test Clay, Clay's loyalty. And Glory thought he wanted her to leave, while Tsunami said he, he didn't. Mm -hmm. So they were able to convince her to stay. Yeah. And so they they decided, like, in the morning to, like, go out to find the, the Mudwing Oh, no, wasn't it? Um, we finally get to. Wasn't it, like... She was hiding there invisible while, like, Tsunami was interrogating Yeah, she was him. camouflaged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because she felt really unwanted at that point like, in time. And then they, like, pranked her and he was like, Oh, I'm so mad at you guys, but I know that I'm not going to be tomorrow, so I'm going to go yeah. watch my face in the river. Yeah. So And now they finally reach to, like, the Mud Kingdom, and that's where they find, like, the, the, the battlefield of, like, Mud Wings, Ice Wings, and Sand Wings. Like, it was pretty graphic. I think there was, like parts of like bone and flesh that were burning off still. yeah it was super graphic like the the battle happened two days ago while they were still in the the sky kingdom on the fourth day mm -hmm. and like i and like tsunami asked like who do you think won and then sunny said who won nobody like this, no one this can look is what i went to you tsunami's just won. like such just a little goof but it turns no, like, like violence they were all you know that is a certified you know, tsunami moment <laughs> <laughs> no like no, like I think that the novel actually mentions that the the sight was so bad that even Glory and Tsunami Winston and felt sick. Yeah, yeah and, like I, think, I, think I don't did. think Glory <sighs> lets herself show much emotion, so that would have been like very yeah. Dark for her. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. No, but her her uh, mood scales don't lie though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they don't lie. They don't lie. 
They don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, like it's speculated that the Mudwing sent a message to Scarlet asking for help, and like she didn't because she wanted to continue with no, the no, 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 Oh yeah. No, 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 no. So yeah, that was kind of lame. And they figured that in the in the Delta, like the the queen uh, Morhen couldn't be there because she lives further down south in the swamps. So there would be like no they're, more. Whereas they're currently in the outskirts. No more jail, I guess, for now. Yeah, so they kind of figured that you know, like we can't have all of us going in. So mm-hmm. Clay and the camouflage Glory decide to go into like the Mud Kingdom to like seek out mm-hmm. Clay's family. Yeah, definitely. Right. And we find like a bunch of like mudwing troops like practicing their formations where they're all like. This ball is actually in a sad. Mm-hmm. We also see them. They also like hang out in like diff- various swamps that I kind of use like the mud as like the little resting point with like mm-hmm. the sun. And then we finally meet uh, Clay's mom, Cattail. Oh my oh, goodness! I, uh, well, she was so is, careless. Like I could not. This is where the, this is where the fun begins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. mm, cows. And basically, Cow. yeah, basically they, Clay said, oh, hey, I'm your son. And Clay, and then Katia was like, wait, what? Oh, yeah, I forgot. I sold that egg for some cows. <laughs> what? Yeah, she was no, like, at least it was two cows. cows. Yeah, and then, yeah. At least it was two cows, right? I thought it was seven cows. <laughs> yeah. I think I got it wrong. It was at least, it was at least two cows, yeah. Mm-hmm. I would have said Very sad really moment. Asha, Asha, the the mudwing that, that died in the prologue, like was actually you. Clay's aunt. <laughs> yeah. And according to like uh, Cattail, she was actually a way more nicer and idealistic yeah. and like giving. It may be sad reading that, hope. Like, Yeah, he would have been able to have like a mudwing person and like you know had like she might have even been nice to Glory. Like everything could be completely different if um, Asha. Had Asha probably would have the the nicest out of the. I think it would be the, like the, it would be like Asha, uh, Hvitcher. Webs do in Castro. Uh, that'd be like the section from like nicest to right. rudest or meanest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's it's kind of like a scale at this point mm-hmm. just to figure out who's yeah. on who. Anyway, so yeah, after after that happened, like they said, you know what? There's there's nothing left for me here, and like they noticed like a sand wing coming to interrogate some wings. Like, oh, seven. have you seen the dragon? It's the sand wings. <laughs> Ugh, worse. The words. The yeah, sandwich they flying towards They were coming to interrogate. They were coming to interrogate some mud wings, saying like, "Oh, have you seen the dragonets of destiny?" And then it's like, you know what? We gotta leave. There's nothing left here. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Clay gets stopped by one of his siblings. I think it was Reed. Right? Yeah, it was Reed. I think so. Yeah. Reed. No, 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 it was Umber. It was Umber. It was Umber. All right. What? Well, he met with Umber briefly over before uh, going yeah, to Oh yeah, okay. Cattell, it was, it was probably it was Reed. Reed then. Who? It was Reed who stopped. But it was Umber who met um, first. Clay from leaving. Yeah. And yeah. And long they have his other siblings, uh, Sora, Pheasant, Marsh, and Umber, which is the one we talked and about. And then he had Crane, I and think, who like, was revealed to have Crane, him. yeah. Can we get like. Crane, it was. Re- it was died in the battle comrade. theater. So, yeah. yeah one, of the, one of the dead Mudwings earlier was probably Crane. Yeah, and, it was really sad. Yeah, I didn't even about that. Him. Well. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 it was, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it, I th- yeah I was like wait didn't that happen earlier but then I remembered like Clay was thinking oh one of those mud wings could have been my sister yeah yeah, yeah. oh my god Lucy like, just pointed I out I... Clay was like a day late to meet his sister yeah it's yeah, really day. sad oh. it was like two days ago yeah. mm-hmm. damn it if they didn't have that fight like I think then he probably wouldn't have been able to see his sister they were still they were still prisoners if Pear wouldn't have messed it up mm-hmm. Oh, I think it was the fourth day. Yeah, like if they if Peril didn't saw to Scarlet, they probably would have met on the on the battlefield. Yeah. Wow. That has a whole other and, layer. Um, Dang. I think Reed like they were actually inviting Clay to come be like the, the big wings of his uh, siblings again, and like Clay thought about it for a little bit, but then he realized like you know what I'm not used to like mudwing customs, and I have no idea how to lead a battalion. I don't want to lead them into like, yeah, to he's like, I don't want to lead them into like a war, because I've already got my family, and then they're yeah. like, oh, you big His little yeah. thoughts, and his he, thoughts about like, not leading his family bubbles. correctly, it, I felt so bad for him. He like, really didn't want anything bad to happen, you know? Yeah, yeah he doesn't even know that. That hatred in the fields, you know? Yeah, I mean that was the best choice of action, really, because like yeah, it really was. If he stayed, like there was a chance that 
more of his siblings could have died because yeah. he doesn't have like the proper mm -hmm. leadership experience. Yeah, like they've been training for like seven war. years and he's just literally got no idea what to do and he fights like a skyway. Exactly. Yeah, so that was literally his best choice of action. Definitely. And I think before he leaves, they also mentioned that like in mudwing culture like if you're like the big wings like the dragon that's born first like your first course of action like your first instinct is to help like the help, other yeah help the eggs, is, like egg. get out from the egg so so he wasn't attacking them and like so clay wasn't the monster that kestrel kept telling him like all those he times. was just like, a sweet guy he was just, just a sweet boy yeah, little boy he's just a little guy yeah. he's a little guy yeah he's a little guy. Yeah. yeah and now and then after, like, once they finally got back, like, Glory and uh, Sunny weren't surprised to figure that out because they figured you're not a monster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, then Sarfoot like, just gets dropped off, right? Yeah, he gets dropped off by Morosius. He gets dropped off by daycare, daycare, doesn't he? <laughs> daycare! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's pretty nutty, honestly. He gets, like, taken out for, like, a, a solid, what, five, ten chapters-ish? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. I think, it was, I think it was ten chapters. And then he just gets dropped back in and says, yo, guys, I'm back. Yeah, he doesn't even, like, say anything. They're like, still flying. He's like, what's good? What's poppin', gamers? <laughs> and they decide that, like, their next course of action is to head towards the Sea Kingdom where Tsunami's family is. Mm -hmm. Because, like, she was revealed to be royalty. And then, and I think they like and then, they then did you like a little dragon pile together after Starfire. Yeah, it was so Starfire cute. Was about I loved it. The scrolls. graphic oh, novel was art was so cute. I love it when they yeah, do like that. they they basically they dog piles <laughs> Starflight when he was about to bring more Star uh, Scroll yeah. facts. And then which is really the funny. epilogue. And then we got the the oh, funny man, epilogue. Funny time. epilogue for children, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Basically, Marosir brings. Ooh. Uh, Kestrel along with Blister to talk their like next plan, mm -hmm. right? And I gotta bring up my notes here. Jeez, I'm like really far behind. What did I write? Yeah, yeah. Kestrel, Morrissey, and Blister like gather around for a discussion, and their plan is to have the Dragonets choose Blister as the next queen. Yeah. And Morrissey also gave Starflight orders to help keep the plan in order. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. like, he was planning for them to like betray his friends like someday mm. and then like Morosir says like oh like Kestrel asks like hey why'd you bring me here and Morosir said like oh did, we said that the dragoners were in danger and you like, came right you away you were in danger right right yeah right and then she, I hope they are yeah then That's he says awesome. like you know what you out you outlift your usefulness and then Blister slashes Kestrel's throat and then stabs her in the heart with her alive. tail barb like why did she have to go to that extent they like stabbed no, she, like, her. She, she was like she was like bleeding. Like there was blood coming out of her mouth. Like it was pretty <laughs> graphic. It was pretty graphic. And then yeah. like Morosir just kind of nudges her body yeah. into the anyway. Ocean get from get, the get a habitual. Literally, it was a habitual. <laughs> it was like, almost the exact same. <laughs> it was like it was like the that prologue, but in reverse. <laughs> Pro, it's it's the same thing. Prologue, epilogue. Yeah. Why? Why did yeah. they? Um, I was okay. Gosh, I don't Chewy, know if I should mention this. Violent. But... <laughs> I'm surprised that they include that for the prologue, uh, for the epilogue, but they didn't include the original epilogue. Yeah. yeah you or I mean, that, I mean, you think the other way, but yeah. Prologue. Yeah. Yeah, because you think that would be important. That's like the main setup for like the entire yeah. first arc. But then they and end then, it with something. Hold on, let's 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 finish this up. We're almost done. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're no, you're okay. Q &A, right? We're, we're, we're nearly two hours in, so I figured we just should probably wrap this up soon. All right, all right, all right. Oh, wow. Yeah, we can um, do some Q&A. Basically, after that, um, Marcia then says, like, like we, we need to keep the plan like, in order. Like, we understand and each other. Needs to be, Webs needs to be dead for the plan to keep forward. And then Blister finally tells Marcia, give me the Dragonets, and we'll both get everything we want. And that's, and that's where book, book one ends. All righty. Mm -hmm. um, yep. That was, a, a, Running. yeah, are we going to let people closing thoughts on it? Stuff. Yeah, like any any thoughts from like the the whole book? Uh, I, I I'll I'll start I guess. I think it was a good a good book to introduce like how the Wings of Fire is gonna be going uh, after that. It was I think it was a really good book for that. It it gets the plot pretty pretty well, and uh, all the characters uh, have been at least introduced that we need to know of, or at least like for the book, for mm. uh, number one book. Yeah, it really it really sets up for the rest of the series. It's, and it's it, just it, a theme for it, right? Yeah. 
it was a good like starting point and gets you hooked. Honestly, like it's it's kind of it's kind of one of the slept on books in this series. It really is because mm. I don't see a lot of people talking about it as much as like the others. Yeah, like. It, like don't get me wrong like it was pretty good but like i could see why it's not like talked about as much because this is like very much early wings of fire like mm-hmm. there were still like points where i could tell like Tui was trying to like find her footing and like where she wanted to take the series because like definitely. the first arc was like a balance between like mm-hmm. idealism versus like cynicism because like you have like some people like who just completely just don't give like believe in the prophecy of like we'll do anything to sabotage while others yeah. hope for like a more idealistic future yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah Mm-hmm. Uh, so overall i think it was a it was a very good introduction for what the series has an offer and i'm i'm glad to read it through yeah, yeah. uh I, the only thing i think i i wish uh two did something about is that hibichir could have been a really awesome character and i really hope he get a winglet in the future or something like that I think so sure the fact, that he really, yeah. the fact that he really like you could tell by how he's talking like he really does believe in the prophecy and yeah, i don't he, think it was like, fair that he like just died so early on honestly i feel like yeah. he had so much potential in a way like he was like, I don't know how to explain it, but he just, he was like, we, I want to know more. Like, he was probably yeah, I, I definitely outcast wanna do, from his I, tribe. I, I definitely do want to know more. Yeah, he either did it on purpose, right? Yeah. Or, um, or like, he got kicked right. out or something. I'm not sure how he got out of his tribe. Okay, okay uh, for the Q&A, should we, like, have, like, a like they want a certain person to answer it? Or, like, how, how should we do this? For the Q&A. I think, like, may, we'll take a look at a few questions and see, like, which ones we can answer. And... Alrighty, yeah. We'll probably just go through it. Yeah, so go ahead. if anyone has any questions, anyone like, has any questions we'll take them now. Yeah, there we go. Just put them in an event yeah. discussion. I think, like, one of the things I kind of wish, like, that happens later in the series, because, like, this is the only, like, this book alone is, like, the only notable time I I could think of where we get, like, Mudwing lore. Like, yeah, this is really only it. After, after yeah. book one, like, Mudwings are kind of overshadowed by everything else definitely which I, I the only the only book that mentions it like lame. at all after that is like maybe a little bit in book five there was one in 14 where they mentioned the queen like she was present yeah like, and then like and then there was it's like, like they um, just go into like a phase so they just don't exist or something like uh, how just does peril how does eat he... black rocks she just does she, like, she just, like, they like never like, like a pill. It's probably like a pill or something you know, for all we know, she could just, like, absorb Yeah, for all we know. She just stands in front of it and it slowly disappears. <laughs> just like it disintegrates and she absorbs or it's, it into or her it's life like energy. Or it's, like, coals. Like, it's some sort of, like, coal or, or like, like, sandstone. Yeah, I just imagine that she's, like, stone. just little... punched it off. I, 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 think I, I, I think I was imagining her, like, just eating it, like, whole, like a pill. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like a pill? Like a pill. Well, yeah, I... I... Aren't like things bigger yeah, just in down the, the throat. Py- Pyria? Mm-hmm. Like I heard. Yeah, that just somewhere. probably swallow it whole. Mm. Is there a way we could have members join the VC to chat things about? We actually have an official Outclaws Discord server that will actually be promoting later, yes, and will. for more people that want to join in and get more updates about definitely, definitely. the show, and also like guest applications for future episodes. And mm-hmm. me me spending all of production in like six seconds of animation <laughs> that that was painful you have no yeah. idea it's a at the time of recording like we have a relatively small community Definitely. but i'm very glad for like what it's been shaping out to be so far yeah yeah I, uh, I think we could probably take a a few more questions before yeah, we close this more questions yeah because like we're nearly clocking in two hours now. Like I, I didn't yeah. expect we. Yeah, I did not expect this at all. Like, if we like talked for around 40, 40 minutes, and we were like not even halfway through part one, right? Yeah. We, yeah. Forty minutes. Uh, can you imagine disgusting. like some of the the later books that have like a long page limit? Like that's Dark probably gonna of be really, That's gonna really be long. horrible to cover, isn't it? Dragon Slayer would probably. Be oh no. <laughs> that's five hundred pages. Personally, this is just an opinion. I didn't really like. Um, why Dark, didn't Dark clay Blair. get hurt when he touched Pearl? uh it was it's because pr- he was born he, he has f- uh flame scales what did i just he say? Has, oh my god yeah he's immune to fire you, you because know what I mean, right? he you was know born what I mean. from a blood red egg yes. i think it's less like immunity and more of like resistance yeah because, like, like it's like, not immunity because like, he still gets burned yeah, he does still get burned but like yeah. it's not uh it didn't activate until like he came into contact with the mud mm-hmm. and when he escaped from the mountain which is something i guess we didn't cover as much because we were trying to speed yeah. things up at the time i accidentally switched to my yeah. phone well 
Okay. I think that's all the time we got for today. Yeah. What do you say, guys? All right. I, I want to end this all by like I want to I want to thank the the R slash. Oops, I I tip my mic. Cough, book six, out. cough. Editor, please. <laughs> yeah. I, I would like to thank the the R slash Wings of Fire Discord server for allowing to promote this and premiere it live here. Mm-hmm. And I want to thank to each of the guests here, Bamir, B, Khan, and V that couldn't make it to the end. Like, I want to thank you all for joining me here because this has been a really fun time. Yeah, it was super fun yeah. to be here. I, wish, I hope I can do like, some more books in the future or help along. This is great. Yeah, and mm. I, and I, I want to thank to like the incredible Outclaw staff team that were able to like work, work hard to like get this pulled off because this has been going on for a long time and to finally have it like pay through is really amazing. And I want to thank everyone of here that's listening to for tuning into us yeah you guys it's are really, really awesome just to get to it's it's really amazing getting to share all this with you yeah i'd also like to thank the thank you staff for choosing me as a guest yeah. it was really it was a good it was yep. an honor it was yeah like, thank you for really having me I mean, this was this is awesome yeah thank you for having me yep. even thank though i got to stay for a sure. little bit but like this was this was genuinely like enjoyable and, and it was uh, like this was a great time mm. yeah yeah i think it's like the most fun i've ever had this was singing the fire i've never been fun. excited for something and, more yeah <laughs> if yeah. you believe like wings of fire wings of fire is 10 years old at this point yeah, yeah. Like, wow. oh my gosh i'm getting old uh, oh. <laughs> like it's like it's it's really great, and I'm mm-hmm. hopefully that more people will be able to get into the series because this is really something worth people's time. I'd yeah, say. definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With all that being said, be sure to join the Outclaws Discord server for updates about the show and guest applications to open up soon, and along with the chance to interact with our community. I think we all- thank you much. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to fly in again soon. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Make sure to check out r slash Wings of Fire Discord server. And if you have any questions or want to be part of the show, contact us at outclawspodcast at gmail.com. Other than that, thanks for listening, and we'll see you guys next time on Outclaws.